My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we're talking about City of Heroes, which is a massively multiplayer online RPG developed by Cryptic Studios and published by NCSoft for the PC in 2004. Yeah, and this unusual episode is executive produced by Steven. Big thanks to Steven. Thank you, Steven. It's very special. It's our first MMO. They said it couldn't be done. Uh, And it couldn't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you, you can you can decide how right that is. Um, these we've been resistant to doing this kind of thing because it is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it requires a time commitment yep. uh, and level of investment uh, that we don't have. Mm-hmm. Generally, uh, we cannot afford while we do this show weekly. Um, but the uh, and they're moving targets. Yeah. So this is something where your experience with city of heroes playing it as it was in development will be different than ours. Mm -hmm. Things changed over time. You have a different relationship with it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, We decided one, um, we like stretching the format Two, there's some value in the experience of what talking about the experience of what somebody would have if they were trying this for 20 hours. Yes. You know, the, the first 20 hours of this still is extant. Mm-hmm. Even if the real appeal of the game or if things that are interesting about it happen later yeah. or only happen when you have like a league that you meet up with every Saturday night mm-hmm. and stuff. It's still an aspect of the game, even if it is playing it incorrectly. Yeah. It's a way that people have played it. Like it's a way that I tried it mm-hmm. back in the day. It's something that happens with MMOs. Um, so we're going to speak largely to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we don't have a lifetime history with city of heroes we don't you know don't have knowledge of the way that it is changed like i played it back in the day uh mm. not very much like i didn't get to high level and do you know it's it, there's, there's there's so much like historical debt we're tourists in this space you know we're not going to be able to get everything right about this you know we just uh end of the defensive portion here we just want uh want you to be uh yeah, the kind worth to knowing us. where we're coming from yeah it's yeah. Worth, worth knowing where we're coming from it's it's also I'm not too worried about it like it, yeah. it would be i'm sure i know this game has shooters mm-hmm it would be a little weird. I, I think the, the thing that I'm more worried about. So the thing, because this is our MMO. Yeah. There are certain things that I feel about this that are just true about MMOs. That's what I was going to say is it's yeah. worth talking about these design principles because specifically because of, wow, that has seeped into a bunch of other stuff. Yes. Of specifically this mid generation. Yeah. The thing that I want to get out that I was anticipating, uh, you know, a, a justified correction in is that I'm going to say stuff like, I don't like MMOs because they're like this. And someone's going to say they're not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. And that could be true. Uh, you know, I don't doubt that. Um, I haven't played a modern mm-hmm. MMO. Um, you know, the, the right people have scared me off of final fantasy 14 <laughs> uh, to tell me I wouldn't like it. Uh, and I trust them. Um, but I believe that there have been advances in the form. Yeah. This is about a very specific kind of MMO that was extremely dominant in the mid two thousands mm-hmm. and design, uh, principles that are core to that specific snapshot of the genre. Right. Um, you know, not saying when I say, you know, if I talk about the story in this and talk about something feeling not super deep, I understand that, you know, final fantasy 14 expansions make people cry. Yes. Not talking about that. 
Yep. Um, yeah. Also, a lot of those changes are in, in degree too. So, like, if we say, "Oh, grinding in these is a problem," right? Yes. Uh, like, they're still grinding in those. I've played. I've 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 played Final Fantasy fourteen a, li- a little bit. You know, just to just yeah. to you know get a get a feel for it, and you're still going and killing a certain number of things and and going back to it, no going doubt. back to a dude. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I just yeah. don't want to get yelled at yeah, about it. Like yeah. that's that's the part where I get managed to get yelled at about it. I feel pretty comfortable in my opinions on City of Heroes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, quick shout out to uh, Pod Save the Waking Sands, the mm-hmm. Final Fantasy fourteen podcast done by uh, Levi and Jen, my very close friends. Yeah, go check them out. Um, yeah. uh, so one thing is we are the version that we're going to talk about, the one that I think is easiest to play now because uh, mm-hmm. you know for reasons we'll talk about when we talk about the development um is city of heroes homecoming this is a fan server that is like a revival of the game that is now in active development with new content and stuff there may be some things that we talk about that are specific to homecoming and we're never there in the original we can only talk about the version we play yeah yeah it's a yeah as long as we're up front i think that's gonna have to be okay Yes. The um and this is also that's a trend right now. Mm-hmm. The kind of retro servers. Yeah. For yeah. for uh you know, I don't know, boomer mm-hmm. MMOs. I don't know yeah. what you would call. Yeah. Uh, uh you know, the boomer shooter. I'm ankle equivalent. I'm ankle deep in po- poking around at some EverQuest stuff because this shook things yeah. loose for me a little bit. So gross. <laughs> um in the uh, <laughs> like, uh so the premise of this game, uh you play as a upstart hero uh, in Paragon City, Rhode Island, an absolute fucking nightmare world. Um it is this metropolis that is an upheaval after Earth fought off an alien invasion by the Rikti. Yes. Um yes. uh you know, aliens uh came down, and tried to invade and there were the, the superheroes fought them off, but everything is in the most chaos you have ever seen. <laughs> It's incredible. Like that's, you know, we'll get to the joys portion of this. Yes, uh, yeah. That is my favorite thing about this game. <laughs> yeah. uh, sections of the, of the city are co- co- cordoned off by alien technology war walls. This is to justify why you can't just go from neighborhood to neighborhood without passing mm-hmm. through a checkpoint. Um, and whole neighborhoods have been destroyed. Uh, and there are also ones that are overtaken by criminal gangs warring for turf. Yes. Uh, the forces of good are overseen by an Avengers like supergroup known as the Phalanx. Um, these are made up of heroes uh, created and run by the developers, which is cute. Mm-hmm. Um, these are led by the Statesman, who is created by senior developer Jack Emmett. And obviously a patriotic, you know, uh, like a Captain America. Yeah, yeah. Cap- Captain America, Superman kind of guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as a hero in this city, you're going to, you know, over the course of your career, as you level up, go from fighting common street criminals, uh, just pummeling countless of them on the street uh, oh, to yeah. uh, countering interdimensional threats, threats to the fabric of reality itself. There's time travel, the usual um, comic book hero scope creep kind of stuff. Uh, comic encompasses. Book stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, we're only talking about the city of heroes side of this. Um, originally released as two different games. They have integrated yeah. the city of villains kind of thing into the rogue isles. Uh, you can join that. That's ruled over by Arachnos. Uh, and it's leader Lord Recluse, which mm-hmm. I love that name, yeah. uh, Recluse Spider. Um, and uh, or as a neutral character in an altered dimension called Praetorian Earth, which is an evil Superman story. Yeah. Um, like basically the Justice League becoming totalitarian. Yes. Uh, which is as old as comics. Mm-hmm. Um, we just did the hero side of it, though. Yeah, that was so. not out of lack of curiosity. Uh, it was just because of time. I had roughly 35 hours to put into this and I did. So, yeah, yeah. I, I ended up putting in less time than that. I felt like I got it sooner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I feel a little guilty about that, but I didn't feel like I got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, anecdotally, uh, Will, friend of the show, also participated in this experiment mm-hmm. uh, with us for a little bit and said that the uh, the rogue, the villain side does have more interesting writing. Mm-hmm. The characters have more cross, cross motives. Yeah. Things like yeah. that. Um, you know, I, I again, I believe that. Yeah, I could see it, you know, so. guild versus OSI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about a highlight here. Uh, and talk about character creation. It's um, ca- this, I, it, it this, might actually be worth downloading the client just to fuck around with yeah. this because it's free now. This, this still gets called out to this day uh-huh. as one of the the better character creators. It's really fun. Yeah. Um. You know, it is. Uh, and I'm not a fashion souls kind of guy. Like if I'm just picking out clothes for a character, I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. But this is more than clothes. Yes. You know. Um. And they have added since it began so many customization <laughs> options. 
for this. <laughs> it's it is uh, it's intimidating when you look at the number of things, and then you know you say, "All right, well, I want to have the on my character's head a hood." Well, all right, what kind of hood? Uh, and then a whole bunch of variations within each of those. It is so granular. Yeah, um, uh, and it looks good. It's got that mid two thousands simple MMO. Mm-hmm. kind of thing when i say it looks good i don't mean like the graphics on this are you know level 12 yeah. i mean that it's all of a piece aesthetically mm-hmm. the low poly kind of guy you make will be charming yeah um it is a really interesting uh companion piece to having played the uh, freedom force games a lot mm-hmm. which have a similar kind of character creator but not as good yeah for making your own custom characters yeah um, you know, it's worth saying like, uh, yeah, this is still called out today. It like this would, there was nothing like this at the time at all. Yes. Uh, you know, now you have, uh, what saints row that, uh, I think that's the other character creator that's still called out as being, you know, amazing. This is a little bit mm-hmm. commonplace, but like to see this 20 years ago, it, yeah, it was a selling point. Yep. Pretty neat. Um, so you choose where you start, as we mentioned, heroes, villains, or neutral, and then you choose your origin. Uh, there, this is how you got your powers. Uh, and there are five options. It tells you right here. It doesn't like impact things very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of powers you can get. It does impact what gear you can use. Yes. Uh, I'm going to call out friction points when they pop up mm-hmm. because the structure of this episode is a little bit unusual. There's no, un- there's no reason why you should find gear that you can't use mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, it's a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, like we'll, we'll get to it. We talk about the interface and stuff like that is such a huge pain in the ass. It is <laughs> clunky and horrible to go through. Yeah. Um, just finding gear you can't use feels like it could have been fixed easily so much so that it's like a design decision. Mm-hmm. That you do that to like drive the auction house or something, yeah. but I fucking hate it. Yeah. I, I hate, it, I hate, it, I hate it. It's really stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, but you choose between these five things, uh, either natural, you know, you're well-trained, Mm-hmm. Um, magic, you're Dr. Strange, you know, science, you've got, uh, you're, you know, you're Ant-Man mutation, you're Magneto technology or cable. Right. Uh, basically. Yeah. So science would be more like Dr. Manhattan. Uh, Ant-Man yeah. Is technology. Oh yeah yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Technology and science. I get mixed up. They also kind of impact which starting quests they point you towards. Mm-hmm. That's not restrictive either. No, no, it's not. Yeah. Uh, then you select your archetype. This most closely uh, matches on to um, classes in other MMOs and in other RPGs. Uh, there are 10 of these available to you in, 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 in Homecoming. Um, uh, though they used to be kind of exclusive. There are five that used to be just for heroes and five that are just for villains. A thing that Homecoming does is it opens up a bunch of, it opens up everything to everybody uh, yes. with, within reason. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he- heroes, um, we have blasters who are long range, uh, you know, DPS uh, and yeah, the uh, controllers, which focus on debuffs and holds. Mm-hmm. Um, defenders, which focus on buffs. Uh, for your your companions, scrappers, which are close range DPS mm-hmm. uh, characters, and tankers, which uh, focus on tanking, drawing yeah. aggro and tanking damage. Yeah, uh, and from the villain side, uh, there there are brutes uh, who basically think like the Hulk. You know, up close brawler kind of guys have a rage mechanic to them. Uh, Corruptors who are um, uh, long range DPS, Mm -hmm. but uh, focus on debuff uh, kind of things, debuff and enemy stat management. Uh, Dominators uh, who are basically like enchanters. Um, mm-hmm. is, uh, is, is what they are masterminds, uh, like a, like a pet class, uh, and stalkers, which is stealth, weirdly enough, a stealth, like alpha strike yeah. kind of thing. And all of these have overlap, which is incredibly important, right? Like right. you are not locked into a thing. Uh, a lot of these characters are, you know, when you read the descriptions, it will be something like uh, good damage at range, but can hold their own. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very rare that you are specialized to, you know, an intense degree. Right. Um, there are epic classes as well, but these are advanced. Um, so we're not going to cover them. We didn't get there, Mm -hmm. uh, really. And they're also hard to use. Yeah. So yeah, Uh, we had some people in the Slack talk about, Ooh, war shades. seems cool. And then like, Oh, Mm -hmm. what, Oh, what is the shape shifting? I don't understand. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, uh, you know, and they're, they're, they're archetypes. This is more about what role you're going to serve in the party or group, mm-hmm. you know, ranged melee critical hits. Um, like not everybody can crit in this, 
Yes. Um, like that yeah. is something that is only unlocked uh, for certain classes, you know, will you have a pet? And each of these arch- archetypes has a special passive ability to it. I I guess, we'll, I mean, I imagine we'll talk about our passive ability when we talk about our classes. I've got yeah. a spot Mind for our characters. Line. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, like they're, these, these vary in complexity quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, the archetype that you choose, choose uh, determines which primary and secondary power sets you get. So, uh, and there are many, many of these. And mm-hmm. each also has a sub mechanic. Um, this is, if anything, has this reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Um, in terms of you know having a primary and secondary and mixing and matching. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, like we talked about character creation earlier, we we're talking about aesthetic primarily, mm-hmm. but this is great. Yeah. Um, you want to be still my heart? You give me a tactics game with this character creation system, mm-hmm. like in this team building, yeah. it'd be incredible. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, your power sets, um, you know, like they're, they're made up of a bunch of powers, each having this wide variety of, um, um, of aspects. You, uh, unlock new powers as you, uh, as, as you level up, you can kind of, when you're selecting these, look and see what's coming down the, down the line, uh, to figure, okay, what kind of, what kind of build is this going to be? Uh, and you know, different powers, you know, are, you know, just like, They've got different effects. So you've got damage, you've got healing, you know, like, do you, do you click to activate them? Are there something that you toggle? Are they just automatically applied? Like all of that. There's a ton of like, yeah. just, you know, variability among these. Yeah. It's very system, you know, based very like darkest dungeon-y yeah. kind of a thing. Um, every, you know, it, this does minus this, minus this attack speed, plus this much damage absorption, that yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all very mathy. Mm-hmm. Um, there are also power pools. These are these tertiary powers that everyone gets at level four. Yeah. Um, and this includes your travel powers. So yeah. uh, there's different ways to travel around the, the world quickly. Um, super speed, super jumping, flight, and teleportation. Yeah. Um, gonna, you know, again, I'm gonna throw friction points out. I wish that you got these earlier than level four. Yeah. I understand it for a power curve. Mm-hmm. Uh, perspective. One of my issues with this game is that it is not fun. It was not fun for me to alt, mm-hmm. uh, to try new characters because I had to do the low level minds yeah. in each one. I wanted to try the different movement powers. I didn't feel, even though it might only take an hour, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like creating a bunch of different characters to get them to level four because I didn't want to do that low level content again. Yeah. So, um, uh, it, it, yeah, I used to be super jumping all the way. I tried teleportation because it made more sense for my character. Uh, teleportation is mm-hmm. great. Uh, it's pretty neat. Just map it to a mouse button. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next last step uh, is where, you know, you're going to be spending most of your time. This is the visual side of it. Um, you know, I had my character that I played. I didn't have any time to put in an alt, but I tried just a couple of concepts, you know, mm-hmm. just to just to fuck around with this a little bit more. Like I made Lion S. Kennedy. Uh, mm-hmm. which is Leon from Resident Evil four looks very similar. The only thing different is the, 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 the coat's collar is not as puffy, uh, but with a lion's head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it allows for it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's kind of weird esoteric rule. Like that kind of thing is fine, but there are weird esoteric rules about making your own captain America Yeah, yeah. and such, uh, is interesting. I saw, uh, somebody, Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw two somebody's actually who had done it anyway. So I don't know what the enforcement is like. I don't know uh, but somebody, uh, now that it, now like, that it's on fan servers, if that's enforced or not, if that's even a thing, it used to be, yeah. uh, I saw a Deadpool and a taskmaster. <laughs> uh, they were both very good, uh, like very accurate. <laughs> nice. So, um, in addition to just these different body parts, you also customize what your powers look like, mm-hmm. like energy signatures and stuff. Uh, all that's very important to the fantasy. Yes. Uh, really, really cool. And then if you're, if you're having fun, uh, you write a little bio, mm-hmm. uh, for your character. I think this is good and fun. Yeah. Uh, good, clean fun. <laughs> um, and you have a battle cry. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, um ba- battle cry is one of several emotes. Like there's no other place to put this really. Uh, the emotes in this are really fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, the people talk about like Fortnite dances or whatever. This, this, this shit was here first. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's the same, same kind of appeal. Yeah. You're standing, you're milling around, uh, cause it's a you know multiplayer game. There's some milling around and you do a little dance yeah. or you, uh, you'll look at somebody and drag your finger across your throat. <laughs> Silly <laughs> shit like that. Uh, let's talk about our characters. Gary, uh, who did yeah. you, uh, prowl the streets of Paragon city as, uh, Dr. Crawl Space, uh, named after something that the home inspector for one of the houses I was looking at told me 
uh, we could hire. Uh, they're you know you find these people they're called stuff like Doctor Crawl Space and they can fix your crawl space. <laughs> That's a good name. Uh, who was set out to create uh, you know provide crawl space renovations uh-huh. at a reasonable price, and then an accident happened. Uh, is the the bio? Mm-hmm. Um, he is a ten foot tall skeleton man uh, in a tux in a suit um, with a brain in a jar or a skull <laughs> in a jar rather. Uh, who summons zombies. Yes. Um, I wanted to summon uh, things you'd find in a crawl space, like <laughs> insects and stuff, but they don't make them. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's a, he's a pet class uh, for that, a mastermind. Uh, and his uh, battle cry was, you're going down to the crawl space, not the <laughs> dot to the crawl space. Um, and that was Dr. Crawl Space uh, for you. <laughs> um, there, wasn't, there isn't really a role-playing way. Since you're on the hero side, you're kind of, everybody is kind of the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I would have liked to have, you know, in, in a, uh, RP MMO, which there's an RP server for this. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Crawl space would have acted differently. Um, <laughs> it, again, beyond kind of the scope of this, this yeah. thing. Uh, the other thing I want to say, if you're going to start this, um, I thought making my character really tall would be cool. Like Angus, uh, Sh- Shrim, you know, yeah. Scrim or whatever from the, uh, phantasm. Um, it makes it hard to see in these corridors mm-hmm. and you can no longer, you can never change your character's body shape. Nope. Uh, so I would have wanted to make my character a little guy if I had to do it all again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what was your, uh, your secondary power? Um, oh, um, uh, uh, like necrosis, I think. So the, the concept behind my guy, uh, my primary power and passive for the mastermind is that you can summon and that you give a buff when you're close to your enemy, to your, your bets, mm-hmm. you know, um, and a bunch of his other moves drained life or, uh, buffed you know, debuffed enemies and buffed characters near me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that was also true for the uh, necrosis okay. uh, thing, which is a debuff thing. So my idea was send in my pets, debuff the hardest hitters so they couldn't hit my guys. Mm-hmm. So they'd be alive for a long time. And then once they had drawn aggro, get up there and do uh, area drain mm-hmm. things to keep them alive, which basically worked. Yeah, uh, It was it was A-OK. I wanted to find something that was so loable. Um, I did a little bit of co-op mm-hmm. uh, in this game, but I also wanted to... I knew that I was going to be playing at different times and I don't like online strangers, which I understand is a Gary thing. Yeah. Uh, is not this game's fault. As, I mean, it, it just kind of makes sense if you're going to be playing it over a short period of time, you want to be able to do stuff, even if you, if nobody's around, you yes. know, that you want to play with. I made a character with soloing a mind too. Um, mm-hmm. so I played as vapor shock, uh, mm-hmm. named after the, the joke in the Simpsons. <laughs> um, yeah. Joe Namath has vapor lock, uh, his car yeah. won't start. Um, uh, he is a corruptor, uh, which is the long range DPS that also does debuffs and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, origin by the character is science origin. Uh, I didn't write anything, but in my head, it was just, he was doing ecological, uh, research and, uh, transferred his consciousness into a, into a crystal orb. Uh, okay. and that orb, uh, is also a, uh, a portal to some kind of elemental dimension or whatever. So he made a construct body to float the orb above and, you know, control it and then became vapor shock. Uh, mm. Vapor shock because the primary power is water uh, DPS, like water mm-hmm. uh, blaster stuff. Secondary power is electrical affinity. Um, so you got kind of those two there. Uh, I really like the way my character looks. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a crystal ball for a head floating above the body. Uh, made the body a little bit scrawny. Uh, instead of a cape, there's like flowing waterfalls coming out of his back. Uh, mm-hmm. Wherever he goes, there's a uh, um, there's steam around him. Nice. Um, yeah. The power set. So, like the water, uh, like the the the, the water blaster uh, kind of thing, uh, direct damage and a lot of area um, uh, effect kind of things. But tons of chance for knockdown and tons of chance for slowing. Um, mm. and so that is good. That is good for soloing too, just to do a little bit of crowd control um, alongside that. Certain attacks in the water and the and the water blasting uh, build up uh, title power is what it is. You get tokens, uh, so attacks will build that up, and then other attacks will be more effective the more of those you have. But it caches them out, um, yeah. so you have to be careful about you know what order you do things. Um, the secondary was the electrical affinity that, um, is all about, um, endurance draining endurance management. So the idea is you have these abilities, um, and you can summon summon a little guy to do this for you that will drain the enemy's endurance. So they're not able to do stuff 
right? Yeah, um, endurance is your monometer. Yeah, yeah. This. Or it's yeah, it's your monometer. Yeah. yeah. Um and um there's like a little bit of healing too. Uh I would have picked a different power set if I knew it worked like this, but like all of your um support kind of things, you can't really heal yourself directly yeah all, yeah all of your support arcs from friendly target to other targets so you have to summon a pet heal it while you're standing next to it in order to heal yourself you have to bounce it off yourself yes yeah. the uh yeah the the drains will work but mm-hmm. they have to be direct yeah as a thing yeah um yeah and and put a pin in all of that in terms of how complex and cool that sounds mm-hmm. um i don't i think the combat in this is a Mm. is not good yeah. uh, as a thing and does not require any of that coolness, yeah. um, at least on the level we're at. Uh, mm-hmm. So get to the basics of play. This is something that maybe gets better Yeah. Um, here. Um, you fight everything in City of Heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, every once in a while, you'll go on a mission and have to find something inside a warehouse. Mm-hmm. But generally, the, the basics of play is you walk down a long, empty hallway. There are three guys milling at the end of it. Mm-hmm. You fight them. And then you continue doing that until you fulfill the condition. You've yes. Either emptied out the the warehouse or office building, or you fought a specific guy in the warehouse or office building. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you return to your mission giver. Yeah. Uh, that's the game. <laughs> Can, that's... Cannot be stressed enough. That is the game. Yeah. Like yes, at some point you're doing other stuff. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, that is all I did. Yeah. Uh, and the other stuff, I mean, like a lot of it, if I know late game MMO play, uh, you mm-hmm. know, from ever, again, EverQuest days, uh, it's doing a lot of very similar things just with more people that you're coordinating between. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bigger, bigger groups. Yeah. So bigger, bigger melees, more enemies, you know, you go down the end of the hallway, there's six guys instead of three mm-hmm. and you have three guys instead of one. Yeah. And they have more like intricate powers or there's a raid gimmick, you know, like a, nobody can stand close to this guy while he's doing this kind of thing. Like, yeah, there are only so many levers that can be hit with this kind of network play. Yes. Yeah. Um, you decide what you're capable of fighting uh, with the consideration system. Uh, when you look at somebody, you can see their name is going to be written in a particular color. This color will tell you what their level is relative to yours. Uh, you don't want to fight uh, red things because they're too hard. Green things, uh, probably too easy to give you much experience. Yeah. And then there's kind of a gradient between them. Yeah. And there is a, you know, I am, I do think the the comment is very simple. Prioritizing characters who are harder is Mm -hmm. a element of strategy. You do have to do that. Yes. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, my point is like, we're going to play, we're talking about fable next week. That combat is dead simple. Mm -hmm. That is, that is super Tappa. This isn't quite Tappa, but I did still between this and the fact that the combat is cooldown based with powers. This had an effect that I've talked about before in other video games where this, I feel, or at least in my experience, honorable minds can differ, uh, turned me into a machine. Mm-hmm. I don't like video games that turn me into a machine. Yeah. Uh, it's why I don't like clickers. It's why I don't like, uh, you know, it's why farming Sims are fun for me for a while. Mm-hmm. And then I start feeling like a machine. Yeah. You know, um, you click on an enemy. There's a little bit of choice in deciding which one, you know, Oh, this guy has a shotgun. He can knock me down. He's got to go first. You click a power uh, that power has an endurance cost and a cooldown, and you have to uh, once your endurance runs out, you can't do anything. So you're cycling through powers, uh, casting them based on their availability and what is like an order of operations uh, right. you have for them. Mm-hmm. My issue with this, it's really similar to Final Fantasy XII, which takes MMO stuff for me. Yeah. Is that once I knew the optimal order, I did was not incentivized to change it. Yeah. Um. I because of my outfit of abilities this debuff was always optimal to do first Mm -hmm. this bit of crowd control was always optimal to do on the biggest target yeah i just became a version of typing of the dead where every word was one four two three five Mm -hmm. and i just did that yeah every fight like i and Mm -hmm. like with a couple exceptions when you and i got together we had to do a couple polls yeah that was near the end of my Mm playtime. that was not something the game represented on front street no, as an additional complication. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I understand that I'm really beating this point to the ground, but it was huge in terms of impact of my enjoyment or like why this, this genre is probably not for me. Yeah. Is that every fight was the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did the same thing over and over the entire time I played this game. Right. It's the, 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 the that, that is the problem of these things. You know, yes. um, I have not More appeal. Like some people love that shit. <laughs> yes. Like it, it yeah. is for some people that kind of rhythm is really, really good. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just uh, the, again I'm yeah. underlining it because it is literal. Yeah. Also, that the, is why I did. Also, the like the context in which you're doing the things can you know can change. Like you will, you know, as you get more powers and you are part of a group. Like, okay, my role in this is going to you know slightly change that. But there is not much you know when I'm putting that hat on where I need to like be super adaptive with it. When you talk <laughs> about it being Final Fantasy XII, like there's something that you can do with most MMOs or something that people you know can do that I that I am messing around with uh, with going back and looking at EQ, which is called two boxing, which okay. is this kind of stuff. Like the, the the functions of a character can actually be turned into gambits, right? Like yes. there's a way to write that logic and to issue commands from one character where you can roll around with bots that basically serve these serve these functions on the uh, you know, on on the roll there. Um, yeah, you, you know, perform it, like a macro. Yeah, you perform you know, you know, macros, right? There's all kinds of complicated scripting and stuff you can do. But to say, like, yes, you can script one of these guys to the point where uh, they, they are performing at, you know, well enough to rely upon replacing mm. a human's input. Um, that is saying you know, th- that in and of itself is a statement about the complexity, not just of the combat system, but the situations that it puts you in. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the adapt. You, you said something in there that I think is really important, which is how infrequently you have to adapt yeah. uh, to situations and what abilities you have for adapt, like mm-hmm. what verbs you have in that. Like basically the thing I could do if things were going badly is withdrawal mm-hmm. to a degree, resummon my guys, uh, heal. You know, if I could, um, that was my option. Mm -hmm. If things, you know, that was how I could adapt. When I think about performing for a team and fulfilling different roles, that excites my build craft, my Final Mm -hmm. Fantasy Tactics team composition thing. But once I figure out those roles, you know, I would still, they'd essentially be a macro. Like if I were playing two boxing this Mm -hmm. uh, or playing with a team and coordinate with friends, all those decisions are up front. Mm -hmm. Um, in In terms of the actual combat, we're still just playing our role. In yes. this, we're not like reacting to things. We're not doing very much sight reading mm-hmm. in, you know, in terms of video games. And that is what is exciting to me and dynamic about play yes. is being presented with new situations yeah. and having to adapt. It's, it's um, not especially expressive play, right? Yes. Uh, um, even if it feels like it's going to be because of that complexity, mm-hmm. like making your guy and coming up with the concept of my guy was cool. Mm-hmm. Seeing those two abilities and be like, this synergizes well. Yeah. That was very satisfying. Like mm-hmm. that, that is a cool thing that happened. It just, once I did it, there was nothing else to do. Yeah. I got powers very slowly. They very rarely changed my makeup. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times, uh, the powers you get are just upgrades. Yeah. You know, of, of things. So like my strategy didn't change when I summoned two zombies. Mm-hmm. My strategy didn't change when I can summon a different type of zombie. Yeah. Um, everything was the same. Yes. Um, and for, you know, bla- blasting kind of stuff, like you get another, okay, so I've got water jet and I have water burst. Both of these do damage and they have slightly different you know, things. This is just another cooldown to juggle, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it increases my output because there's another attack to throw in, you know, to throw in on that. Um, uh, so I want to say something like the, like the two boxing thing, I would not yes. be going back and looking at EverQuest on this, uh, mm-hmm. if it was not, uh, the case that basically the meta for how you play that now is six boxing. So it takes it from, uh, you are playing just as one, one little doodad in this machine and turns it kind of in, into an RTS. Yeah. So like you're controlling it, six characters at once, right? Yeah. But are they, do you carry, are you controlling them directly or are they, are you setting up gambits? Uh, yeah, no, no. They're like, there there are gambits that you can control and activate okay. uh, through scripting yeah. language kind of stuff. Yeah. It just like, so the, it still feels like creating the team would be fun. Mm-hmm. Executing on it seems like it would be less fun. Yeah, yeah. To me, and that's, I, the, that's I'm not a trying to tell us. you which fun you're having. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not trying to tell you you're not having fun or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, but I guess what I'm saying is like if I don't know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I think I'm just trying to talk about this EverQuest thing that I'm doing because it's real cool, and I am very nostalgic for this era of MMOs because yeah. I was in middle school when it happened, and I yeah. you know had a lot of time. I was teasing you when I said gross as well. I I don't care how you spend your time. The, uh, you know, that that's fine. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's just a a thing where I think that in terms of play, I just need a little bit more complexity for, for me to continue to, uh, to be engaged. It runs into another problem that is not unique to MMOs, but is an RPG thing where 
a really good number of your skills are debuffs Mm -hmm. and many enemies are not worth debuffing because you just kill them. Yeah. Uh, so when I have, when I'm, you know, you're talking about choosing between two water skills, they do slightly different things. I had a bunch of different necrotic skills that did, did slightly different things. One of which did a debuff to like attack speed and one of which did a debuff to attack accuracy. Mm-hmm. Um, one, because it's cooldown based, I'll just do both. Yeah. There's a minor difference in what order I did, but two enemies would die. Oftentimes like the, the Jeroni enemies would die before I had a chance to see the effect. Yes. Um, that's kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have, uh, you're facing a large number of enemies, mostly. Um, debuffs are not particularly fun. And that, again, that's not an MMO thing. That's a RPG thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, that happens even in RPGs I love. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it bummed me. Bummed me out. Uh, you, you know, you're basically uh, doing MMO stuff, so you do need to pull aggro. You need to pay attention to who's being attacked. You need to know when to back off and do a strategic retreat. Yes. Um, when enemies die, you gain their loot automatically. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, bodies don't stick around. There's no arguing over who gets what. Um, uh, you know, and the things you get off of them influence enhancements, inspirations. We'll talk about those uh, later on. Um, very generously, if you die, you are just sent back to uh, you're sent to a nearby hospital. And the, the, they have Vita chambers in this. Yeah. Uh, uh, enemies keep all their damage. Yes. As well. Uh, so your progress, not just down to the killed enemies, but down to their damage. Like mm-hmm. you just go back. They've been waiting around for you to come back from the hospital. Yeah. Uh, well, the important thing about the city is that's a nightmare for everyone. <laughs> not just the heroes. It's also a nightmare for the crims. Yeah. Um, there's no cost to this. There's no cost to dying uh, before level 10. After level 10, uh, you start uh, accruing experience debt. Um, when you, uh, when you die, you mm-hmm. you'll barely notice that this is here. Uh, it just makes the, it, it makes you level up a little bit, uh, more slowly until the debt is worked off. Right. Yeah. Uh, from death, you can also use an inspiration, which again, we'll say what those are to revive yourself or certain teammate abilities can revive you as well. You get the option, mm-hmm. uh, you'll press button, go to hospital, press button to wait, <laughs> uh, basically, um, missions are given out by contacts, uh, who will give you a choice sometimes of which missions to take. Mm-hmm. And these contacts represent uh, a bunch of quests in a story arc. Yes. Um, you finish that story arc, they will send you to a new point of contact. Also, there are points of contact you can just find out in the world mm-hmm. as well. Um, so you can you can kind of free range it too. Um, they cut down on, uh, they made ease of use a little bit better in terms of giving everyone a cell phone mm-hmm. in this game. So now you can call a contact back. You go up and talk to them and say like, hey, and they say, hey, go check out the Superdyne here. Once you've done it, you can give them a call. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you've done enough missions for them, this is ridiculous yes. to me. <laughs> they have to like you. They have to like. Otherwise, me. they they screen you. Uh, <laughs> the the guy who does the technology powers uh, down at the city hall is screening my calls. Yeah, this he left. He, he left me on red. I hate this. Yeah. This fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, yeah uh, so you have to do and the way you get that relationship up is by doing yeah, missions yeah. so in the beginning you have to hoof it and then you don't have which is kind of a microcosm of the fast travel thing yeah um they want you to it's so it feels good when you can call them mm-hmm. i guess but i'm I'm always a little skeptical of that yeah. with holding an ease of use thing until the end to try to make something that could be in the game from the beginning feel good yeah if i you know, was it, it, you know, it, all you have to do is like two missions for somebody before you get this. If I was running the homecoming server, which I'm not, I'm sure it's very difficult. Um, yeah. But like, I don't know, get rid of that. Like, make it so you can call everybody. Yeah. Why not? <sighs> I can call everybody right now if I know their number mm-hmm. and I got the contact. That's what I, that means. I can just guess numbers too and see if somebody yeah, picks yeah. up. Yeah. See if somebody will give me a job. <laughs> if you call a random person in Paragon City, are you trying to tell me they're not concerned about Superdyne? <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> like, if they, if they know a warehouse, they can give me a mission. <laughs> beating, beating up on housed people is what I do. <laughs> uh, you just have to find them, you know? It's basically calling superpowered next door. Uh, <laughs> clearing camps. <laughs> like, it's bleak. It's really rough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, be- 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 becoming a living nightmare for all of these, for all of these people who live yeah. on the street. Um, yeah. uh, will get you experience, you know, completing missions will get you experience uh, and you level up at trainers uh, uh, and you alternate. Uh, what level, what different levels mean. So at even levels, you can pick a new power and at odd yep. levels, you can allocate extra enhancement slots to different powers. Yeah. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, through that. I wish the power drip was a little bit faster in this. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some th- ways to level up kind of idly. 
yeah. um, day jobs and patrol XP. Um, I didn't do these. I just was like, I didn't do them. Um, a guy said, ask me about the exciting world of day jobs. <laughs> and I, and I did it. And he's like, day jobs, if you end your session at a certain place. And I was like, ah, yeah. I, when yeah. I, when I want to stop playing this game, I just, I really want to stop playing it. Mm hmm. I understand it'd be more efficient to get XP while I was not playing, but also yeah. the experience is not really changing as I level up. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, once I knew I was only going to be in this for a little bit, I stopped yeah. wanting to level up optimally. I want to log out. Like I want to go to where my next quest is going to be and then yes. log out there so I can get Hit started the ground right running. away. Yeah. yeah. It's like how, when I was playing XCOM, I always stopped before a battle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause I, when I sit down, I want to have fun immediately. Yeah. Patrol experience is, um, uh, a little bit different. Like everybody got that. Like if you saw on your experience bar, like there was like a darker blue section above and beyond mm -hmm. where it was. It's like the opposite of experience debt. Uh, this is just rest experience from, from wow. Uh, back in okay. the day, I have no idea if they still have rest experience or not. You just level up faster. Um, until, until that is, uh, until that's spent. Good. Uh, Paragon City is laid out in zones, as was the style at the time. Uh, you can travel mm -hmm. on foot uh, between checkpoints to get between them, uh, or you can fast travel around the city using Take public the transit. Yeah. Your super, <laughs> Superman takes public transit. It's so good. <laughs> oh, real quick. Uh, we talk about XP and leveling up with the trainer as well. Uh, there's a trainer in each zone. Uh -huh. you go up, and these are such funny scenes because there's just <laughs> two dozen of the crew, like <laughs> milling about one person. Oh, oh. who are just answering all of their questions patiently. It's very <laughs> funny. The original members of the phalanx live in hell. All they do is stand around leveling up people. Yeah. It's really good. It's, it's really funny. Just completely choked. They can't walk. <laughs> and Miss Liberty just absolutely dragged down, yeah. uh, you know, like she's walking through Latria and everyone's trying to go over him. <laughs> um, the, uh, some zones don't have transit stops. Um, these are hard areas, these challenging areas called hazard or trial zones. Mm -hmm. uh, also didn't do those. Yeah. Uh, it was, was just kind of doing submissions. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about gear because we alluded to things like enhancements and uh, inspirations. Uh, this gear system is not like any other MMO you've probably played uh, because you're not like picking up pieces of armor and putting them on. Uh, it is not fashion souls in that way. Um, you already mm -hmm. pick that stuff. Right. So if yep. you're, if you, if you've got a sword, you designed how that sword looks, right? Yeah. Um, instead you get these enhancements and that's what goes into these slots on different powers. These are, um, doodads that you can, you know, get as loot or buy at shops. You can make them in some instances. Um, and these are restricted by origin, uh, which is not as meaningful as you would think. It just means that roughly one fifth of the items you pick up, you cannot use. Yes. And you now have a chore to sell. Yes. Uh, you can eventually break them down, I want to say, and you can convert them. Mm -hmm. Eventually, this is gated. Yes. You can't do this right away. So initially, you're making a lot of trips to the store mm -hmm. or to a guy standing around to sell him this stuff. Yeah. Um, the the interface for that, I don't know if you have a place for this anymore. Oh, no. It's dog shit. Uh, uh, yeah. We, it's we talk about awful. It here. <laughs> it's a, so the on one side of it shows all on the left side, it shows everything you have. Uh, but for some reason, tooltip hovers don't work on that. Mm -hmm. So you then have to cross-reference that with your inventory. Mm -hmm. Like, look at the name of something, look at it in your inventory to see what it does. Yeah. You know, you can, they have different symbols. So you can see which ones are like not for you. Like I had no use for magic, selling magic stuff. Uh, so I could do that easily. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to know if something was low quality or not, I couldn't do it from the selling menu. I had to open up a separate menu and cross-reference between the two. Mm -hmm. this, the menu that you have can only show 10, uh, of, them at once, 10 of them at a time. Yeah. So you have to scroll through that as well while yeah. you're scrolling with a different scrolling system through the selling mm -hmm. system. There's no reason not to have a sell all that don't apply to me button. And yep. that is if they didn't implement, you can't pick up stuff that doesn't belong to you. Yes. <laughs> like it, this drives me nuts. Um, it's you, you might have an inventory limit. I think you do. Yeah. Uh, Cause I kept getting notifications about it when I leveled up. Mm -hmm. I never hit the inventory limit, but this just made my inventory for these things clunky every single time. Unless I took a chore to go rearrange the fridge. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that, that's what I had to do. Like every time I leveled up, it was like, all right, got to do my taxes here. And then ins yeah. instead of cross-referencing, what I did was I just moved all of the ones that didn't apply to me to like a later page. Um, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, I just sold the ones at the bottom. 
Yeah. Well, th- yeah. this was for selling ones that were that did apply to me, but I didn't have use for anymore. Yeah. There yeah. Were too I, low I, level. Moved, I moved those to their own page yeah. and then sold those. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those got a third page. Yeah. There's lots of pages. You have to you have to think in terms of databases to, <laughs> to sell things that you shouldn't have picked yeah. up in this game. Yeah. Mar- Marge, um, how much gambling losings did you have last it's, year? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's literally that. And the funny thing is, so this is to me a downside to an upside of this. The idea that you pick up loot automatically and you don't have to haggle with people about who picks up what is good. Yep. Right. It also means you can't choose not to pick something up. Mm-hmm. So you are going to get choked out with this shit. Yes. Like the number of microplastics being carried in my <laughs> knapsack is just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, l- uh, later on, like it stops being about or- like origin um, uh, uh, enhancements and starts being a little bit more like, oh, I crafted these or like they're like meta ones that you get that you, you know, that basically like people, people say that the bonuses you get from the, from the regular ones are nowhere near good enough to deal with it. So just sell, sell everything until you get yeah. those ones. Uh, I wanted to engage with the system as it was. And it yeah. was kind of a constant headache. That might be the meta, but yeah. I don't, you know, it's not what the game tells you to do. Yes. You start running into uh, like Bloodborne Chalice Dungeon Gem optimization yes. shit with that a little yeah. bit. Um, uh, so I didn't want to do that. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that, that, that's a good way to put it. Like right down to, um, you know, different enhancements, like they fall into, into different categories um, mm-hmm. and like they will improve certain aspects of your powers and, you know, not every enhancement can go on every power. Right. So all of this, you know, all of the slots on your direct damage ones, might, direct damage ones might be full. So that means you have to either, you know, see if you can combine this or you have to try and sell it. Right. Yes. Uh, an easy interface win for this. When you click on a power, it gives you the combine menu mm-hmm. um, as opposed to a here's every power that could slot into this. Yes. Which is which is what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, you eventually will outgrow these enhancements. Yeah. Uh, they'll stop giving you a benefit uh, and you can replace it once you place them. They're permanent. Um, but you can overwrite them or you can try to combine it with a similar enhancement and level it up. And mm-hmm. this is your gambling, like your Diablo kind of gambling for this. Yes. Uh, it may or may not work. Mm-hmm. Um, also on homecoming, I don't know if this is the, uh, if this is the case for everything. You, you could also just use your money, uh, which is influence for heroes. Uh, like there's just a button to level everything up to the max level that it, uh, mm. that it could be. Yeah. Um, then you just pay, you just pay the money to do that. Um, yeah. I had somebody, uh, uh, I forget who did it, but I was just standing around in, in Atlas park, um, the newbie hub kind of place I was standing around in there. And then somebody just came up and gave me a million influence. Oh, Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, All right, the well. idea of giving somebody influence. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I can vouch like, for I, you, I, bud. <laughs> yeah. I can vouch for you a million times. <laughs> the, like the idea that they got rid of money makes sense because they're supposed to be heroes, uh-huh. you know, but I love that it's still a fungible. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of Spider-Man's reputation. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll go back and, and say you did these things. Yeah. You were right there off, off screen while I, <laughs> I took care of the Joker. Yeah. yeah. Um, at level 10, you can start using the invention s- system to turn junk loot into special powerful enhancements, uh, that provide multiple benefits at once as well. Uh, this felt pretty finicky. You also have to find recipes, uh, to, yes. uh, everything uh, is just kind of held back by the interface on this. Like I could see it, a version of this where this system is really neat to mess around with, but mm, yeah, it, it's not it's, as presented. It, it's a combination of interface and uh, marginal gains. Yeah, yeah. So like half the time when you gain a level, you gain a couple more enhancement slots that never felt exciting. Yeah. It was a chore to go through my fridge and find which ones would fit. Mm-hmm. I would put in the best ones. Again, I'm a machine. There's no option here. Like technically lowering the cooldown on this versus increasing the damage should be an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. My cooldowns are not such that I'm going to feel that choice. Yeah. I'm still just doing the one, three, four, five, two every single time I run into an enemy, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, if I end up doing one, three, five, four, two, mm-hmm. that's not going to make very much of a difference. Yeah. Like this is, it just meant every other level. I was not really making a meaningful choice. Mm-hmm. It also means when you pick up stuff, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. I was constantly picking up things, getting either vendor junk. I can invent into things or these enhancements, but I was never like, Oh, fucking cool. Like that enhancement seems sick. I can't wait to try that on my power. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that. You're getting plus, you know, minus 10% uh, endurance cost. Mm -hmm. Nothing is exciting. Yeah. On this. Um, Maybe the high level ones that people say to wait for get Mm -hmm. exciting as is. This is a whole 
aspect that plays into the entire game that was a whiff for me. Mm-hmm. Like the economy wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, I went to the auction house mm-hmm. to try to see uh, if I could get something powerful or like is something exciting that I could save up for. Uh-huh. No, I tried to see uh, sell some stuff because I was like, oh, like, let's see how this works. I priced everything very, very low. No one bought it. Uh, Mm -hmm. because of course they didn't, because all this stuff is free. You just get it from beating up on house people. Um, it was, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just literally this thing, huge thing full of systems that is a major part of an RPG, like an economy that was not, there was no joy in interfacing with. Yeah. Um, huge bummer. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. And like it, it, like it's there, it's there for people who want to calculate DPS Right. Yep. You know, like it, it, it's, it's there for any of you, like there are mods you can get that'll show you, uh, you know, all, all of these readouts of data and stuff. It's just, it is also marginal, especially on the way up. And if you are playing this, you know, not as a single player game, but as somebody who is going to maybe get to mid level and then, and then stop, uh, you know, mid level play and end game play are entirely different things. And yes. usually the, you know, the, the level one to 50 or one to 60, uh, is entirely different, but not in a way that is way more engaging than what is, you know, at the, at the end game. Yeah. It is a weird trope in MMOs that they cannot start good. Yeah. And I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it is a, it is a refrain from every, for every MMO I've ever heard about that people have talked up is that like they start bad. And then they eventually get good, but you have to get through this bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why not make the part without the bit? Yeah. You know, don't, don't put the parts in your stories that people tend to skim. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it doesn't, it's, you know, and that's not the same thing as why don't they make the plane out of the black box? Yeah. Because it's not hard to make things, you know, if you, if you have the capacity to make it interesting at the end, you have the capacity to make it interesting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a really maddening game design thing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Got to kill rats. Uh, what can I say? Got to kill rats. Got to kill rats. You know, even when single player games have given that up, mm-hmm. you know, like they make fun of that. Like the, the barge tale, which came out the same year as this, that <laughs> was making fun of the killing rats thing the same year this came out mm-hmm. and I'm killing the equivalent of rats, human rats, <laughs> Good AKA, Lord. AKA, <laughs> AKA, AKA, people I've been called about on next door, um, <laughs> superhero next door. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, there's another piece of gear or inspirations. Uh, these are consumables. They are bonuses that last for a short time. Um, these are healings and buffs, revival items, and you have a limited number of slots for these. Mm-hmm. So you'll get a little thing that says you're full and you'll click on one. Yeah. Um, eventually you can get more slots mm-hmm. for uh, inspirations. So you can have more of them around. The, I have no problem with these. These make sense. Yeah, I like uh, these. To me, yeah. it's useful to deploy a heal, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at the right time. Yeah. And things like that. So you still buy, you know, to buff up right before a, uh, right before a boss encounter, uh, stuff like yeah. that. I, this is, and this I, is any way to handle, um, consumables, I think. I think so too. And then I also think having them on the front page, so mm-hmm. you're not actually going to an inventory, you're just clicking, no. uh, on there is good. Yeah. Um, with the limited inventory, this mm-hmm. is a, a th- this is a thing where limited inventory really works for me. Yeah. Uh, completing big missions and story arcs will reward you with merit. Uh, this is like an alternate advancement currency. There are a bunch of those in this game. Um, <laughs> there's one that'll be uh, talked about in a section at the end here. Uh, but this can be turned in at special vendors for improved items. So it is, yes. you know, there's influence, there's merit. At a certain point, the naming convention gets in its own way. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very funny. Integrity. Mm-hmm. You know, stick to itiveness <laughs> points, like shit like that. Sorry, um, guys, I can't come along. I don't have enough gumption for the ticket. Yeah, <laughs> damn it. Oh, but your gall rating is so high. No, that's different. I can only trade that in for merit based. If I if I start a small business within a low income zone behind a low income war wall. <laughs> um, uh, so there's different mission types uh, here. You can just run around the streets and arrest guys hanging around. Uh-huh. Uh, and there are also a shocking number of crimes in progress. Uh, one of the funniest things to me, you look out on any park and there's six people being mugged at once. Yep. Um, there is, and this is a city where there are like four heroes for every citizen uh-huh. as well. And like, I can't help you from being mugged. I'm too busy going and checking out the Superdyne hospital. <laughs> like, it's very funny. Uh, I only did this when I was right on the edge of leveling up. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, if I just wanted to get to the level before starting a story. This is the slow way of leveling up. Yeah. You also, you don't want to do this because there are like mission types that you get that are like kill X number of this, yes. this kind of, this kind of person. Person. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I know. I know what you're saying. I'll yeah, figure out yeah. what you're putting down. Yeah. Much to discuss. It's like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't want to like kill a pod of skulls or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, find out that my next mission was, you know, kill 10 skulls. Yeah. I was like, well, okay, yeah, you have to make sure you're not credit for that. taking out endangered skulls. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't want to work for free. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, you go to contacts, you get, your, you get your missions, you can, um, do these on your own or in a group, uh, something that is great about this. And I'm not sure that this was always the case, but in, in the experience now, you do not have to be level matched with somebody in order to be useful in a group with them. Yes. Uh, I think that it might only go to the, you know, to the, to the point where like you, like somebody at like average levels down along with you, but like I was level 20 and you were 12 or something like that when we group, when we grouped up for a night and it, it didn't, it didn't kick up a fuss. Right. It yeah. just, and I still like got rewards for doing it too. And the way they do it too, is that we didn't talk about this with the powers, but this is another good thing. Another virtue mm-hmm. is that, uh, when you, if I leveled up for this, I didn't get new powers mm-hmm. for that. I didn't go through character creation, but your powers level up and they're useful for the whole game. Like mm-hmm. your, your level one power when you're using it at level 10 or whatever yeah. is more powerful and we'll do something different. Yeah. I think each set only has like eight or 10 powers, something like that. So they have to level yeah. up over the course of the, you know, uh, with your base stats as the character levels. Yeah. Yeah. They change. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is really good. Um, there are missions you can only do alone as mm-hmm. well. There are solo missions and missions require a group. Yeah. Um, it'll let you know. Most of them are freestyle. You can do it as you want, as you want. And they'll also let you know uh, if it's on the border. They'll say, hey, this mission's a little bit tough. You may want to bring a group. Yeah. Um. These missions falls in, fall into categories. There are exceedingly few of these. Uh, yes. you, you can tell that they're, they've got like six blocks and they're trying to bash them together uh, with this. Taco Bell combines seven ingredients in yes. a new way. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the, uh, the street sweeping missions is what I saw these mm-hmm. referred to as. Sure. Uh, right next door. Yeah. Where, where you're on the overworld, like in these zones and going and defeating a set number of enemies uh, from a particular gang. The pretext for this is after you've killed a certain number of them, you get a, a clue that will start the next mission in the string. Right. Yes. Uh, canonically, you know, before somebody yells at us, we know you're not killing them canonically. You're sending them to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, so much that uh, Blue Justice or whatever at one point was like, hey, on your way back to the transit, will you send 10 of these guys to the hospital? <laughs> uh, which is very funny to me. Um, they just fall down and disappear. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in, in, uh, it, yes, they can, they can go to the hospital, yeah. but you're just taking them out. Or I'm s- I, like one of the powers is using radiation. So like, <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're doing a lot of really bad things. I was literally draining their life yeah. from them. So I don't know how that was making them take naps or putting them in jail, but like, it's fine. I was dousing the, them um, with water and passing high voltage through their body. Yeah. You had a dehydration thing. You had, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had the horde wilting power. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's not something you do, you know, gently. No. Uh, other mission types take you to zones. Um, so they're instance. They're not in public. Nobody else. Once you're inside that warehouse, nobody else is going in there and fighting the same guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are a really similar set of warehouses, office buildings, uh, things like that. Tech corridors. Yeah. Um, that have, you know, just worth noting, I'm not expecting there to be, but there's no ecology to this. Mm-hmm. Um, these are really like unusually long hallways, nonsensible layouts. Yeah. Every once in a while you get something with some elevation that can make it a little bit more interesting. Mm-hmm. The office um, building general, biome. Yeah. Yeah. That has, that has a couple uh, elevation areas, mm-hmm. you know, or sometimes some obstacles will be here to kind of spice this up a little bit. It's not a level design triumph. No, you know, by any means, um, partly because of the nature of the combat, but partly because a lot of times it's just a hallway with three dudes Mm -hmm. standing at the end of it. Uh, That happens a lot. Um, it also repeats layouts like these are not proc gen at all. So you're going to, uh, you know, very quickly because every mission is pretty much is going to take you to one of these, you know, you're going to say, oh, it's this one. It's this layout. Okay. We're good. Um, 
uh, this kind of heavy reliance on on instancing was unusual at the time uh, in 2004. Uh, I think EverQuest had only just added instance zones around this time too, and that was like for stuff for a very specific um, uh, for a very specific expansion. I think WoW didn't really start with any kind of instancing. Um, you know, in order to uh, stop conflicts uh, for people going at the same yeah. dungeon uh, at the same time, or it was very limited. Uh, this being mostly instances was unusual. Yeah, and probably good. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's if I think about what the alternative would be, like there's just a bunch of guys already killing the guys I need yeah, to kill. Yeah, yeah. That just seems frustrating just to me. I don't see what. Yeah, yeah, just waiting my turn. That sounds artificial and and kills the fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you just have to feed all the enemies or beat a boss at the end. Uh, sometimes there's somebody you need to rescue mm-hmm. and, uh, you either find them and free them and they're, they're done, or you have to escort them to the exit or another objective point. Yeah. Through this. It's not odious. Uh, the enemies will not target them. Right. They can be hurt sometimes through environmental things. I want to say, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we did that thing where they was on fire, <laughs> the guy out. I think that he could be hurt by fire, yeah. but we, the enemies were, we could, we could ignore them mm-hmm. and they ignored us. Basically. We just walked back out. Yeah. Yeah. The last mission type is uh, find object missions. Uh, find the shinies, I think is what I saw it call on, uh, called on a wiki. Um, uh, this is where you need to, you know, locate things and either interact with them or destroy them. Uh, they yes. will uh, shine faintly uh, so you don't miss them. Sometimes they will be pretty well hidden. Uh, mm-hmm. Something that is nice is when you get down to one remaining, its location will be highlighted on your map. Yep. It's worth noting also in these things, there are also groups of three or four guys standing around. Yes. Yeah. It plays very similarly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that's the bulk of the missions. That's all I did mm-hmm. uh, during this. Um, the, uh, you can handcraft the difficulty of your instance message uh, missions by changing your notoriety. So you can set up a relative level to fight or how many heroes you're the equivalent of. Yeah. So uh, this is useful for leveling up more. If mm-hmm. you want a harder challenge, level up fast, faster you can. Yes. Uh, it changes also like what is the boss of this encounter going to be? Because every uh, enemy group, every gang has uh, like different strata. So they're, they're like graduated lieutenants. series of bosses. Yeah. 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 Uh, so which is, which is impressive. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're know, fighting the skulls or whatever and seeing the different levels of lieutenant. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is Bone Basher, but here's, you know, uh, Tibia Lord. Here's a, here's a Bone thing, Daddy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, here's a here's a bone daddy. There are a lot of bone daddies and bone mamas. Uh, you have to fight. Uh, things like that uh, is impressive. The idea that you can just skip past that and the story will dynamically change to be, you know, instead of backbreaker, it was bone nasher. Yes. You know, who I ran into. Yeah. Um, there are groupings of missions that can have um, special conditions generally made for uh, coordinated players to tackle. Uh, uh, but And this is where you get to the fine distinction between task forces and trials. Yes. <laughs> yeah, love nouns. Uh, task forces apparently are fun. These mm-hmm. are like the raid level things. Yeah. Uh, really big strings of missions. Um, I didn't do these again because just at the beginning of the game. Um, these are long. Yeah. Is the main thing I read is these take a long time. It's a big commitment, like a multi, you know, planned multi-night encounter Mm -hmm. kind of thing. I imagine, you know, being a raid, like being a big thing for your group. Yes. I hear. And then there are trials, which are smaller versions of this. Yeah. Um, You know, you sometimes just go to a dedicated zone for this, but it's, it's like a miniature task force. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, you know, like these will end with climactic encounters. Um, you know, maybe that maybe it's the boss of the, uh, of the, of the gang you're going after. Uh, sometimes it could be giant monsters. Uh, this is something that we didn't, uh, engage with at all, but I looked at videos of it and I saw, um, yeah, red, like red, red, red wikis seems neat. Just like what yeah. if suddenly there's a kaiju, right? Yeah. And all the heroes of the city coming together for something like that would be fun, mm-hmm. you know, um, or most of the, the heroes of the city. I think yeah. these are probably still an instant zone. So it's still your team. Yeah. But. Um, so, uh, visually kind of moving on to aesthetics, uh, visually, this is not super intricate. Uh, this was developed in 2004. It's been expanded upon then it's had some visual updates, but it, so it looks a little bit better than you expect, but it is pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of like to me, simple, but kind of aesthetically pleasing, Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, blocky and, and clean mm-hmm. looking in character designs for yeah. the most part. Yeah. I have no problem with the way this looks at all. Yes. No, I think I prefer it to the wow uh, look of oh, low God, yeah. impact on machine. 
yeah. know, that kind of goofy Pathfinder goblin uh-huh. look is not my favorite thing. Yeah. It's uh, what if a character was 80% pauldrons? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> big, big pauldrons, big shoulders, <laughs> big shoulders, big knees, but nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the one problem with the graphics, and I never found a way to fix this, is that draw distance is a little bit of a problem. Uh, horizontal draw distance, not that huge of a deal. Somebody's far enough away not to be a factor. Doesn't matter if I can't see them. If I am hunting down specific enemies and I am flying or teleporting over the city, um, mm-hmm. it, like I, you have to be not too high up in order to in order to a- actually have those enemies be visually there which is a little bit of a bummer i when i first did my you know sweep and clear uh uh, the uh that's what i did as well thinking oh this you know it matched the fantasy i would teleport from place to place in the sky looking for these enemies it didn't work and then realized that i just need to run around the block a few times yeah yeah. uh that's actually how you take care of this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um uh, visual design stuff is great i mean we talked about the character creator um and, you know, different gangs are all identifiable at a distance. You know, their mm-hmm. units are varied. So, like, not every skull is going to look the same. You can tell, you know, who's going to be a lieutenant, who's going to be, uh, you know, uh, especially difficult. Uh, yeah, I really like the variety that's on display here. Yeah. Uh, and they generally have different abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, usually it'll be one ability. Yeah. Right. So, like, a, a character will be the shotgunner. So, the thing you need to keep in mind is they can knock you down. Yes. You know, they have one verb. As mm-hmm. you get into bosses, you start getting more abilities uh, for them. It gets a little bit more complicated. At the level I played, it never got very complicated Yeah. Um, for this, but it does get more so. Yeah. Getting up to around level 20, uh, you start running into gangs that have um, much bigger mechanical gimmicks, and there's much more variety uh, between the different uh, types of enemies and ranks of enemies. There's strata. So, like, yeah. you know, I started doing missions about the the the, the Sioux, T S O O, which are you know Mortal Combat Triad people kind of guys mm-hmm. who have tattoos that give them magic powers, um, yeah. and they serve very different roles in their own little makeups like that. So, like, there is ceiling there for this. At the low level where you're going to be fighting, like the most of what we're going to talk about is the skulls, you know? It, yeah. It, you I know. hate those guys. Yeah. The, the, uh, you know, I made my, 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 and it started, they started to pass me on to the trolls, which I think is the next level Yeah, uh, of them. But there, there's just a lot of gangs mm-hmm. uh, through here. Fun to read about. Uh, yeah. It's, there's good wiki stuff in this. There's good world building, mm-hmm. you know, I guess uh, the writing in game is very functional. Uh huh. Uh, it's really weird. The broad strokes of what's happening is classic comic stuff. Yeah. Um, the dialogue does not have very much like spark to it. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a lot of charisma in what people say. Yeah. Uh, in this, um, everyone, you know, you get a lot of like cheese it, it's the bat, <laughs> you know, or cheese it, it's the spider. You get a lot of that kind of stuff, which is kind of fun. The first time you see somebody, you know, oh, it's Dr. Crawl Space, run. You know, like, it's kind of cute, right? Like, there's there's, there's some appeal to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, talking to you know, people, get, the most complicated thing in the missions I was doing was during the Superdyne case, which is the one I did to completion among Pokey and a bunch of other ones, um, was a character who, uh, we, you know, drew in, uh, was being played. Yeah. Like, who we thought betrayed us and who didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about as complicated as it got. Mm-hmm. And in terms of just like the, the pros of them saying that it was like, oh, I didn't, I would never betray you. It was an accident. Yes. And then me saying it's okay. Mm-hmm. And th- that's kind of it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's really thin writing uh, mm-hmm. at least so far. Some of the better writing shows up in clues. Yeah. We talked about clues earlier without really saying what they are. They're kind of the narrative stuff that Links clues the stuff the, together. Yeah. If you if you want the context for what you're doing, you do the clues, you mm-hmm. read the clues. Otherwise, you just follow the map markers. And there's better writing in the clues. Yes. Um, it's still, I wouldn't call it great shakes. Mm-hmm. What is neat about it, though, and this is more of a macro level thing, and I think it plays into the, into the aesthetics as well. Like, these people love comics. You know, yes, like, oh, very much. It's so. it's representing a lot of stuff. Like they have a world and an excuse to do pretty much every kind of dumb comic thing they want. Dumb non derogatory, right? Like one yes. of the one of the gangs is just mafia guys. So if you want to get like organized crime punisher shit, well, there you go. There you go. go. Up against them. Yeah, it supports. A, you know, part of the appeal of this, I think, is that on a base level, it supports a lot of fantasies. 
it doesn't support a lot of gameplay. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a weird example of something that does that. Like, mm -hmm. and that kind of, that plays into the character creation stuff as well. Yeah. Like you can make almost any kind of guy you want to make mm -hmm. in this, but something I think about a lot in terms of video games, and this is going to come up a lot during the next episode during Fable is the equation, right? Yeah. Like you have an equation has something on each side of the equal sign. Mm -hmm. And this game has a lot on the, what I can make. You know, I can, I can embody what I would like to embody. Mm -hmm. I can't do what I would like to do though. Yeah, the moment to you know, moment the, flattens everything. Yep, it, it is just, I am a simple tool. Mm -hmm. Kind of regardless of what kind of fantasy I make up in my head, there's a huge mismatch mm -hmm. between those things. And at least for, you know, again, for me. That's not to say that, uh, you know, different types of player, uh, different types of characters play, all, you know, all play the same. Oh. It's just that your character doesn't have a lot of, you know, difference in what you, what you do. Get in, when, yeah, in, in, each in character is kind of a linear thing. Like I yeah. could start a new character, it would play differently. Yeah. Which would be cool. However, it would play differently for most of the time I played it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe at some point getting to high level, it would get different. Obviously, team compositions different. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, probably a good time to talk about that. Yeah. Like I spent most of my time playing alone in this, not because uh, you know, I like playing games alone. Video mm -hmm. games is a solitary activity to me. It is more fun with people. Yes. Um, I played with strangers mm -hmm. twice. I played with you once. Mm -hmm. uh, way more fun to play with you because yes. we just talked about whatever was going on. Yeah. Um, it was just something to do with our hands while we chatted. Yeah. It, you know, I, um, we did a little mild amount of strategizing, but mm -hmm. generally we just kind of chatted. Yeah. Like we were, we, we were just chatting and goofing around, you know, we were just on discord kind of hanging out. I, I, I teamed up with some people from the community. There was a community guild mm -hmm. go fabulous Thunderbirds. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just, it, t times didn't line up. I did mostly soloing as well. It was very fun, you know, just duo duoing with you in a way that made me feel like, oh yeah, like it just having this be a standing co-op appointment with you and a couple of other people would be, or would be a good time. Would be fun. Yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of, you know, that's a big part of the appeal of this is that you have this social zone that is basically unlimited content. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, I, I like playing video games co-op in general. When I was doing more of that, uh, Derek went to school, my co-op buddy, so I haven't been doing as much. But when I was doing more of that, we would choose new games mm -hmm. really frequently. Having something that you just kind of exist in and not doing that, I can understand the appeal yeah. of. You know, especially if it's something that the low level of engagement is a boon. Yes. Me not having to think too much while I'm playing it is really good because I just want to catch up. Mm-hmm with my friends. I I'm not made of stone. I can see the appeal of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not that different than me playing tabletop games, mm -hmm. right? Like I find that more engaging, like, yeah. you know, in terms of that, but it's still fulfilling a very similar thing. Like of catching up with my friends. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we just got to, got to say, like, we spent a lot of time playing this, you know, not the, not, not the particular way that is, you know, op optimal. We did experience it, um, yes. you know, with, with group play to a certain extent. And it made a difference. Yes. Like anybody who's like, oh my God, you know, I can't believe you played this solo. Of course you didn't like it. I played it both ways. It was more fun with people. When you're picking classes, Even, it tells you which, which classes are good for solo and not. Yes. Like it's, they it's know, an option. They, in they know game. people are going to want a solo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and playing with strangers was less fun than playing with you but it was still fine mm -hmm. there's just somebody there and it's kind of neat yeah you know like it, it's a weird kind of thing like it feel almost like a journey kind of thing where even though i'm not talking to this person at all mm -hmm. me healing them still has that kind of like oh i did something yeah yeah okay, I, like giving us giving somebody directions <laughs> you know it kind of has that feeling a little bit like a mild yeah. amount of good samaritanness yeah, I, I you know I, I serve my role. I I pick I pick these abilities. Maybe I don't get a chance to use this one. Uh, it turns out it has a use. It makes stuff easier yeah. for other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's also thousands of people around you at all times. Yeah, uh, which contributes to a vague feeling. You know, like it contributes to a certain uh, uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that to me was only ever funny. <laughs> yep. Um, it was a fantasy destroying atmosphere. <laughs> Everyone crowded around Miss Liberty uh, uh -huh. to level up, running into uh, just these huge traffic jams of people <laughs> looking out and seeing like six different people stopping muggings and stuff. Uh -huh. Just made it funny to me. Uh, I wasn't super charged by it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just it made me laugh lots of uh you know just did a lot lots of unintentional comedy i think uh yeah. just you know being built built into this non-derogatory right like those little 
uh, just kind of emergent things that happen with a bunch of people around. Um, yeah, that that's a that that like, that, that, that is an appeal, right? Yeah, if um, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. Yeah, you know, and, and it's fun to see other people's heroes. You know, to see yeah, what I just, they're making. I was gonna say that too. Yeah, yeah there, there's an element of just kind of show you know show and tell mm-hmm. going on, and you'll every once in a while you'll see something that's genuinely funny. Yeah, you know, uh, if you if you click on somebody, there's also a server that is more RP. Yes. Um, which we didn't do. I think it's the Excelsior server. Um, the, uh, I can imagine that being a very different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, going online and just playing in the character and stuff is a totally different thing that I am not equipped to speak to. Yes. I can understand the appeal of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I, I think that that sounds interesting to me. You'd come up with your own storylines yes. and things and kind of make your own fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the gameplay would still be the same, but I could understand making your own fun in that. Yeah. Um, word of caution on this, uh, <laughs> Just an anecdote, uh, Dennis from the level, um, uh, st- you know, like a couple of years ago, picked this up and was playing it and joined, joined a guild and it was a role play guild. Um, and Uh-oh. was, ha- was, was having, uh, was, was having a good time, right? Like it was, mm-hmm. you know, not super stringent, uh, in terms of the role playing, like there is out of character chat, um, uh, you know, having a good time. Then that guild over the course of like a couple of weeks turned into a sex role play guild, <laughs> Hey, make sure you're not, I, you're not I, walking I was flipping into a, coin a between situation. Sex or Nazi. <laughs> like the, the internet game of sex or Nazi. <laughs> Everybody um, was consenting, you know, but like that yeah. was, that was when Dennis had to part ways. Cause that he wasn't yeah. there for that. <laughs> Listen, this team used to be about justice. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. um, something that I forgot to put a bullet point in here, but I do want to talk about is the design of the world and the fact that being in a city, um, especially a city that is designed and laid out like this one and also having, um, also having uh, so many instances, right. Does take away a little bit of the joy and danger and mystery of exploration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. There's not, there's not really, all these zones did feel pretty the same to me. It, yeah. it being realistic, you know, more or less like an urban, mm-hmm. uh, made it feel like I was just going through different stratas of wealth. Yeah. When I went to a different zone, um, I understand you can go to Praetoria, you can go to like different zones that are a little bit trippier. Yeah. And, and that, things that, like that's that. the thing about the rogue isles, the villain place is that like those get a little bit like that's, that's more varied environments too. Yeah. Which would be cool. Like I have, I have no, like that. I, I believe that exists and would mm. be neat. It does not feel like exploring a big dangerous world. Yeah. Uh, in the main game, you don't get anything like trying to cross a continent, uh, and doing the dean, you know, having the dangers of not having fast travel and, ex- you know, overextending yourself. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk about development a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Cryptic was founded by two guys, uh, Rick Dakin, Dakon, not sure, um, and Michael Lewis. There uh, cannot be two guys. <laughs> That's my little Dakin joke. Dakin yeah. joke. That's for, fine. Uh, that was good. Yeah. yeah. yeah just um, throwing that out there for the Torment fans out there. You know, where we know you're there. Well, yeah. make, make, make some noise for us. Um, they wanted to make an online RPG. Uh, they liked playing RPGs. They thought that that was, that would be fun to do. Uh, and this was in the late nineties. And even by that time, the fantasy space was crowded, you know, 1999, you had EverQuest launch, but even then there was, you know, Ultima online. I think Meridia 59 was around there at a certain point. Tibia was started up, but bunch of shit. Right. Yeah. Uh, so they started uh, thinking of alternate concepts, and one that consistently rose to the top as they were brainstorming uh, was comic book superheroes. Right. Yep. And it's worth saying we have not always lived in a post, you know, MCU world. Right? Yes. Com- comics have reached a mainstream now that would have been unimaginable in the late nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, basically specifically the late nineties. Yes. Um, you know who uh, because X Men came out. In mm-hmm. 2001, and kind of started a big kind of boom yeah. for comic book acceptance that that happened slower. Is, you I, know, I, like we still we didn't get there until MCU, but yeah. eventually happened. Mm-hmm. Um, comics in the late 90s were bad as well, like it's the a, actual floppy books. There's a there, there's a t- the term the the the, the dork ages. Yeah, Mar- yeah, Marvel was bankrupt around this time. Like there are a lot of problems uh, going on mm-hmm. with comics at this point, but uh, comics have a long history. They do, you know, and it, it is a a pulp genre that was under tapped at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, they found an investor and created cryptic studios with the purpose of developing city of heroes. Uh, the game was announced in 2001. First gameplay was shown at a demo at E3 in 2002. Um, and you can find video of that, mm-hmm. uh, which is a nice little, uh, time capsule 
Yeah, yeah. It is, it, it's neat to, you know, it, it's a it's a developer walking people through the different scenarios. Um, it is just somebody's camcorder recording it, so the quality isn't great, but I think that lends to the appeal of the video, too. Yeah. Um, the developers, like we mentioned a little bit earlier, they took an active hand in putting their self-insert characters into the world. Um, and, you know, that helped them establish the lore of the game and keep the stories going through these major updates called issues. Um, this is not a game that was aggressively monetized through expansions. Like issues would be like little micro expansions that they would put out with new features, new zones, uh, as the story kind of advanced. Um, really there were only two expansions and they were kind of whole new games in their own right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, the developers, when they talk about this, they talk about how chaotic this was. There was very little planning put in for the long run of new features mm -hmm. for this. Um, and eventually, you know, as they did this, they eventually did release. Uh, yeah. 2004, April, uh, months before its bigger competitor, biggest competitor, World of Warcraft, uh, here. And Marvel immediately sued them. <laughs> uh, good old Marvel. Uh, calling uh, the game a machine for infringing on copyright. Right. Uh, here. Um, and this, people were creating... Uh huh. Uh, you know, Wolverines. Yeah. There are uh, Wolverines about, and it gave you the tools to make a Wolverine. It did give you the tools to make a Wolverine. But one of the things when you're suing for damages is that damages need to exist. Yes. <laughs> and making a Wolverine in City of Heroes doesn't do anything. I'm not, oh uh, man, I'm rolling in the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, it's the, the uh, I'm charging people two bucks a gander, gander to look at Juggalo Deadpool. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this case fell apart. Uh, Marvel admitted that the, they had created these uh -huh. uh, infringing characters. They had gone out to make sure you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they, but the ones that they submitted as evidence were made by them. So like yes. actual exhibits. Nobody was really, you know, yeah. And the judge, pe people like, were doing on. it. People, yeah. uh, I remember at the time when I played this around, you know, contemporaneously, you'd mm -hmm. run into a captain America from time to time Yeah, yeah. as a thing, but mm -hmm. also there's no damage to that. I don't give a shit. I yeah. don't want to make it sound like I'm taking Marvel's side in this. Cause it was no, fucking no. dumb. It's bad, it's bad, bad behavior. Uh, probably yes. motivated by the aforementioned bankruptcy. Um, in the early 2000s, they started doing a little bit better, but they also, uh, new business manager. Yeah. This is Joe Quesada, um, new X-Men, uh, era basically. Gross. So they were, they were, yeah, Bill Hamas, they were doing different stuff. Yeah. So, um, uh, in this period, if mods saw you make a, a carbon copy, they would genericize you. <laughs> so instead mm -hmm. of being Captain America, it would be Admiral Patriot, and they would change yes. the visual details. Um, yeah. they, they also updated the, the license agreement to make players responsible for any damages their designs incurred. Uh, yep. you know, on again, them. ridiculous. What are, I was going to go see Wolverine and Deadpool, but I already <laughs> saw Wolverine and Deadpool <laughs> and see if you're homecoming. Yeah. So I'm not going to buy that movie ticket. <laughs> um, the, uh, Marvel eventually would work with cryptic. They mm -hmm. made their own MMO, uh, Marvel universe online, which I have no experience with. Yeah. It was very shortly after this too. It was very fun. Yeah. 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 Um, City of Heroes became this kind of minor uh, cross-media property. There are novels, comics, uh, tabletop games. There was a Heroclix line uh, of mm -hmm. these uh, of these guys. I'm sure those are hard to get a hold of and you know pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a uh, bu bu bunch of stuff related ancillary media. There was also like a movie option uh, at a certain point. Um, yeah, uh, back when that would have been novel. Yes, you to have. Uh, good. They created a standalone. Uh, eventually, they to expand. Outside, you know, actually in games, they uh, created a standalone expansion called City of Villains that came out the next year in 2005. And the games were separate uh, subscriptions, basically. Yeah. Uh, you can only play the one you owned. You couldn't just cross over. Yeah. Eventually, the games did merge in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, but at this point, they were basically different games. Yeah. Um, choosing a flavor, like kind of a Pokemon Red and Blue thing almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with bigger differences. Like you're in whole yes. different, uh, like regions. Uh, yeah, different lands. Yeah, yeah. Um, by this point, I had moved on uh, from City of Heroes, so like I was tempted a little bit, but I was in college by that point. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. yeah. Um, yeah. Cryptic sold the City of Heroes IP to NCSoft, uh, who was their publisher in 2007. Some staff stayed stayed behind to continue working on the game. Uh, this breakaway studio was called Paragon. Uh, and Cryptic went off to make other MMOs. Like they've made stuff that you've heard about, including a spiritual successor called Champions Online. Um, mm -hmm. They also developed the Star Trek MMO and uh, the Forgotten Realm, M Forgotten Realms MMO Neverwinter, uh, which mm -hmm. I know a lot of people played. I think Champions Online is based on the tabletop property. 
Mm. Uh, the superhero tabletop game from the eighties. Um, a third expansion called going rogue was released in 2009. This adds the alternate dimension called Praetorian earth. This is the one where, uh, the, you know, the justice league have taken over. It's a Mm -hmm. totalitarian thing. You're loyalists and rebels to this, Mm -hmm. um, it reduces this alignment system that allows heroes and villains to cross over. So you can be an anti-hero or a like vigilante. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, oops, all punishers. Yeah. Which is like, all right, I'm done, you know, with the city of heroes content. I want to go over with this character and experience the villain stuff while I become a vigilante. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the game was struggling by 2011. Uh, it went free to play. Um, and in 2012, um, Par- NCSoft closed Paragon and anou- they announced the game's cancellation. It was canceled at the end of November uh, in 2012. And whenever an MMO dies, goes down, it is a, it is a huge event. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, you read interesting stories about this. Yeah. Everybody gathering. People who, who are there yeah. when the plug is pulled, like people, you know, a, a fan surge. Mm-hmm. Like the world is, there are enough people where anything is, somebody's favorite mm-hmm. and many somebody's favorites. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's interesting. Like, and you, it's a interesting decision for business people where they have to decide like, what is the minimum number of people, mm-hmm. you know, to make this work make sense. Yeah. Like, do I owe it to people to keep a boutique server going for, you know, a few, th- a few thousand people. Right. You know, I have to remember too, this was not, this was before, you know, <laughs> today we have games getting pulled after 11 days. Uh, yes. you know, uh, MMOs were kind of the only games where that could happen, where this thing that you bought and this thing that you played could just be taken away from you because it does not function without, uh, without the servers. So yeah. like, it was an incredibly rare thing to have the game taken away from you along with, you know, the community. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the original devs were going to make a sequel. They were going to buy the property back from NCSoft to work on this, uh, but they were one signature away. Deal fell through. Mm-hmm. Uh, also later revealed that Paragon was in the early stages of developing City of Heroes 2. Yes. And they shut down. So we don't know what that would have been. Nope. Um, but every, and everything was quiet until 2019. And then fans discovered that a private server built up on the game's source code had been continually running in secret. Yep. Uh, And that code leaked. Uh, And everybody uh, made their own fan server. Uh And in kind of a a rare, you know, got to hand it to a corporation thing. Mm -hmm. And CSOF didn't step on this. Yeah. Uh, You know, they didn't destroy it. They stopped the code from being handed around, but they didn't shut down the servers that are already going. Yeah. Uh, Uh, One of the least Nintendo things you can do. It's, it's great. Uh, the, yeah. you know, a, a, a very good move that should be rewarded on their part also should be rewarded. The people who, you know, maintain and run the server and are doing like the development, like yeah. making new content for this thing. Yeah. I hope they have a Patreon. I hope it's doing well. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you, know? you can get like special in game currency. There's like a donation system for it. Um, and there we you go. know, in the game itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in 2024, uh, just this year, NCSoft officially licensed the fan server called Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is supported by donations, as we mentioned, and that's how you can play this game easily now. Yeah. Um, development has continued. They're still adding new areas, new content, uh, fixing bugs, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, and it's just in the hands of the fans, which is great. I love it. Huge, uh, you know, I talked about before, big benefit of uh, PC gaming mm-hmm. is this idea that you can pass something off. Yeah. Like it, it can exist after... The money men are less interested in it. talk about the quest in this i would love to do this a little bit quick because it's boring. yeah yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> like i'm not trying to be mean yeah, it's yeah. just it the the stories are not those stories that i ran to were not good uh-huh. uh during this i wish that they were but they weren't yeah um, and that doesn't mean there aren't good stories later but like i just found this pretty bland yeah pretty uh, to, to go through this pretty perfunctory yeah. Yeah. Uh, ne- never going to talk about all of the story content that was available. 
Um, yes. Also, like the mission times don't vary much. So, like, we're gonna be talking about like the broad arc of these of of some of these missions, uh, you know, yeah. story wise. And if there's like a if if there is a um uh like a particular gimmick to something, we'll talk about that. Uh, also, these notes here are based on my uh right, you know, my m- me going back through my 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 souvenirs, uh, which you get for completing quests to you know look at the quests and uh, reconstruct my play. So Mm -hmm. Gary, if you had a particular, particularly cool mission run that I did not do, um, feel free to intersperse. I did not have a particularly cool mission run period. Okay. Um, again, not hyperbolizing. I just, nothing, nothing really stood out. I did the Superdyne quest and the, um, the junior heroes Mm -hmm. quest. And then the first quest of a couple other ones, which were just sweeping clears or go to a warehouse. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that is what I did. Yeah. So I'm ha- comfortable when you take the lead on this because I think that you have a co- uh, eclipsed me in mm-hmm. terms of what I have done. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there's the tutorial. Uh, weirdly, you can select your tutorial on this. Uh, there are two of them. Uh, the one that is recommended is the is is the old one from before Going Rogue. Going Rogue um, uh, uh, took you into a more active crisis for the for the tutorial and involved a choice at the end. Like, do you want to be a hero or a villain off the back of this? Um, uh, but uh, the the one that we did is called Outbreak. Uh, mm-hmm. Where you're working for a traffic officer, uh, and you're trying to get to the to, to the bottom of the of this of this outbreak, people on the streets are going mad and becoming uh, super violent. Uh, you yes. know, related to this drug that has gone onto the streets. It's hilarious how this is separated because uh, they're just in little like escape from New York chaos zones. Uh huh. Everything will be regular, and then there'll be a fence. And on the other side of the fence, it's escape from New York ruins, <laughs> which is like ghouls standing around punching each other. <laughs> and stuff these people on the drug. Yeah. Um, so you do errands. You He tells you to go talk to another guy. You do that. Tells you to go punch a guy. You do that. Eventually, you learn that uh, this drug is a mutagen from the Richty aliens. And it's being studied by Cray Industries. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Um, you know, big, big, amoral super science organization. You're, you know, you're Ventec. Uh, this yep. culminates, you do your first like dungeon crawl, uh, introducing you some instances inside the Cray office building uh, to get the research data. Uh, you get a NPC that you can team up with here called Flower Knight uh, to show mm-hmm. you a little bit of group combat. Um, and you clear the place out. Yep. And the tutorial ends with you being near the central administration building in Atlas Park. Uh, this is where the HQs for the different origins are. Um, and you get a lead on a contact for a low-level arc to pursue yeah. uh, here. Um, this is going to depend on which origin mm-hmm. character you talk to. All of them are available to you. Yeah. Uh, I did not do the full thing of my science origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up doing uh, the beginning of a couple other ones, and they were sweeping clears with different mobs. That's... So I fought the little uh, mecha- mechanoids. Yeah, the clockwork gear. The yeah. clockwork guys, and I fought a different gang that wasn't the skulls. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I fought uh, the skulls. Yeah. So basically, uh, you just you, you start with doing sweeping clears. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yes. The, like the 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 science the science or, or, uh, origins mission. Like so, the origins. Uh, what what changes? I believe is what the first mission is. Like oh, there are these zombies um, who are uh, crawling all over the streets. We need to go find out what they are. Uh, and it, you know, it turns out they're the Vazalok. This is a gang of, uh, zombies and evil doctors that serve under Dr. Vazalok, um, who, uh, is a mad scientist, uh, putting bodies together to make monsters, trying to make the immortal being that can transcend death. Uh, mm-hmm. it is an excuse for you to fight some zombies. Um, the science origin then segued into, uh, working for a guy who sent you around, uh, to a whole bunch of, um, uh, places to deal with various low level gangs, kind of introducing you to the skulls, uh, the circle of thorns, outcast clockwork trolls. Yep. Uh, who generally the, at this level, these gangs don't have very strong separate gimmicks. Yeah. Um, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, somebody who can knock you down 
somebody mm-hmm. who does ranged, somebody who does close up. Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, the circle of thorns is, is a, is a little bit different, uh, because they are the one gang at this level that will rely on debuffs and mm. deep debuffs at this level just mean your days. So you can't attack very often. Uh, the circle of thorns is this group of like druids, uh, gotcha. kind of people you catch them, yeah. uh, you catch them doing, you know, rituals on the streets and in the parks, you know, standing in a circle around a citizen that they have like held up in an energy orb. It's worth noting too, these things don't spawn until you spawn them. Uh, yeah. So if I didn't get the, the circle of thorns guys, cause I didn't get, didn't get told about them. Mm-hmm. So they are not hanging around. Yeah. When I was walking around, the gangs that will be hanging around are limited by which ones you've learned about mm. uh, at this point. Yeah. At least initially, I explored that first zone and did not run into any Circle of Thorns guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like like if you go to the parks, uh, the Circle of Thorns will be there. Like um, different gangs will have different turf. I think not, that uh, not the, if you don't know about them. Like really? I, I, the uh, yeah, no, huh? I, I was in the first zone. I never saw a Circle of Thorns. Hmm. I don't know what the Circle of Thorns are, and oh. I spent a lot of time in that first zone. Oh no, so uh, like uh, parks. you you end up going to different places. So like you go to you go to um, like uh, 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 the other like level five to nine places. So like, this is what will take you to King's row for the first time. Uh, this is what, what will like send you up into Perez park, uh, where that stuff Got is. You. Yeah. It's different zones that have different, uh, I see. uh, different gangs that are associated with them. Um, I see. Yeah. And certain gangs will only pop up in certain, certain neighborhoods. Um, they have uh set spawn place kind of deals. Um, gotcha. yeah. Uh, the, the, the outcasts are mutants. Uh, is what they mm-hmm. are uh clockwork or little robots and trolls are people who are uh addicted to this uh this uh, drug called superadine which we'll talk about a little bit yeah uh you yeah. do a mission where you uh deal with the hellions uh for uh for for a federal agent uh this guy mm-hmm. um and you learn about a ritual that they're doing uh and that they are just pawns for arachnos uh, for the city of villains folks and they have the agent's wife hostage and you end it with just saying like, Oh, well, we'll figure that, that out later. We can leave my wife <laughs> to dangle. <laughs> yeah. This will, this will, we'll just take care of itself. Yeah. Uh, one of the things it directs you towards, uh, you'll have a contact that'll direct you towards a young hero to try teaming up with named uh, twin shot. And uh, this mm-hmm. is when I first realized I made my character too tall because I was twice as tall as twin shot <laughs> and made getting around awkward. Uh, she's hanging around outside of city hall. Uh, she's really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, very welcoming to you invites you to the headquarters for her super group, the shining stars. This is meant yes. to be like a young justice league. Mm-hmm. Um, we get to meet her crew, uh, which do have distinct personalities. I got the sense these were meant to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, not to wear that phrase out before next episode, <laughs> but I, I, I did get the sense this was supposed to be funny, but I did not find it particularly funny. Yeah. Um, you get proton, uh, who is the main guy flambo, who is a fire themed, uh, kind of a, an outdated stereotype, kind of like a, a uh, legally valley, blonde kind of valley, valley girl. girl kind of kind of thing. She eventually turns yeah. into a villain because she's just so self obsessed. Uh, gotcha. The, is the deal. Uh, there, there, there's there's Dillo, who is an who is a, an alien in a uh, in a pressure suit who is not yep. used to speaking, so it just will intersperse dialogue with sounds. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then Grim, who is an animal man, wolf man, you know, kind of a wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in your missions, you join them on this extended tutorial. Uh, eventually, the base gets attacked uh, by Arachnos agents, and you go from guy to guy helping them out. And while you're searching for this, we get to find out that they're targeting Manticore. Uh, Manticore is a member of the Phalanx, uh, the big team, the Justice League, and mm-hmm. it's their Batman alike. Yes. And you go to his hilarious mansion full of glass cases with two crossbows in them <laughs> over and over and over and over. <laughs> like it's very funny. And dude, each of these crossbows can't be the specialty of Manti. It, it's, he loves those. <laughs> they are uh, to him. E- each one of each one is my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you go into his bat cave uh, down below and you defeat these Arachnos guards. And then Manticore just walks in and says, ah, yes, you have, you have beaten my guys. He, he yep. got, he got Arachnos uniforms and staged this whole thing to test you to see if you're ready to be sponsored to move up in the world. Yep. You're a better super team than you thought. There is one little mechanical twist in this mission where there's a secret door mm-hmm. uh, in Manticore's place that you had to find. Yeah. And unlike everything else you inter- interface with, it doesn't glow. Mm-hmm. It's just a bookshelf that turns into a hand icon if you're close enough to it. Yeah. Which is f- fine. I don't want my stakes shoot up for me. It's worth noting though, that like 
every other interactable in the game has glowed. It's a, it's a break in the language, right? It, yeah. It felt a little bit like it trained me. I know this didn't like stop me off for days or whatever. I'm yeah. not an idiot, yeah. but it, it, it did. It felt like a little bit of a betrayal of training. Yeah. Uh, to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's talk about Superdyne. Yeah. Uh, Superdyne. And, and yeah. Yeah. What is the, uh, what is the Marvel equivalent of this? The, 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 the mutant, the, mutant growth hormone. Okay. Uh, MGH. Okay. Uh, basically. So yeah. it's, it's things that gives you mutant powers for a short amount of time. This is also a big part of the boys, uh, mm. compound V. Okay. You know, th- this is, this is a very old comics trope. Yeah. Uh, this is the first big quest in King's row, which is like the level five to nine area. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and you uh, start this out with a reporter named Shauna, um, who is covering the rise in this, uh, street drug called superadine, uh, which temporarily grants people superpowers. Uh, yep. somebody is putting it onto the streets in a large quantity. Um, I, and it is, you know, wreaking all kind of chaos. Yep. Uh, and it turns out it's the skulls. They're getting people hooked. They're injecting people on the streets. It's addictive. Uh, kind of, kind of a fresh take on the taken strategy, yeah. just like, uh, inject. <laughs> uh, so you do missions again, just kind of the missions you always do, uh, punch your way up this ladder until you eventually find bone daddies. Uh, bone daddies are like a lutenant in this, uh, mm-hmm. and is a great name. Yeah. Um, and you find one named toothbreaker Jones. Um, he gives you details about a new shipment Yeah. and this ends up being an ambush, but you learn that the skulls are performing an indoctrination ritual. Uh, so you rush to the warehouse to stop them, uh, taking out another one of their, uh, lieutenants, Chernobog Petrovic. Yeah. One of the, the leaders. Yeah. This is the, like the, 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 the skulls were founded by these two brothers. We're going to get the other yes. one later. Um, the skulls are a, um, uh, they're, they're, they're occultists, uh, mm-hmm. specifically, uh, trying to harness. Worship. Yeah. Uh, worshiping death and, uh, harnessing negative energy, uh, through, uh, through all manner of death. Yeah. Yep. And this is where they started. Uh, they were going to meet up with the trolls as well. This started segueing me into the trolls. Yes. Uh, at this point, um, there was an element of like, <sighs> There's a, the big element in these quest chains of like, you have to go to the basement. But once you get to the ba- basement, you have bad news about the attic. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. You know, and it's because these are long ladders, right? Like mm-hmm. in a single player game, you know, the, the biggest point of reference to this flavor wise that I have is, is Freedom Force. And I think about how that takes you up superhero tropes. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm dealing with this guy now. I'm dealing with the the Kang style guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do three missions in, in a row that have me working up his thing but because it's not meant to be forever content he has like two lieutenants or one lieutenant and then you move on to a new thing Mm -hmm. these are all longer things you can spend more time in them and level up slower it's part of the general pace of play that is the genre Mm -hmm. of like slow down stretch you know (laughs) like this idea that i was constantly just getting to an end and being like well we can't take care of that now just wait and then we'll get another lead and Mm -hmm. just fight a different lieutenant yeah like i wanted to climax some of these stories it, you it, know, and it, yeah, it, and, and it always, it always leads to, it always leads to something else. Um, and that something else is just a new zone, a new gang and a new zone that is higher level. So like yes. the skulls are like level one to 10 kind of guys. And the, the, the trolls are like mid teens, uh, you know, yeah. kind, kind of folks. Uh, so you end up fighting them, finding them over there. Like one thing ha- always has to segue into another in a way that yes. MMO quests generally didn't. <laughs> and it, it, it bones me out like as yeah. a thing, because it, it's a thing where the gameplay is frustrating because I'm just kind of climbing the same ladder over and over, but it really killed the fantasy for me. Mm-hmm. Like one of the things that's interesting about this game and how it didn't land on for me super well. And it's not like I took no joy in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not absolutely immune to numbers go up. It was mm-hmm. fun to, to try new powers and, and everything. But the, uh, one of the things is I am so in the fucking breadbasket for this fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, there's not one I'm more in the breadbasket for. This was the MMO I tried mm-hmm. when it was contemporaneous because I love superheroes. I love yeah. comic books. I love comic book tropes. Uh, this is my shit, but I don't think it's a very good execution of it because of the structure, because mm-hmm. the story cannot have payoffs. You cannot have the kind of like twist and intrigue and long running things because you are switching, you're climbing a ladder too yeah. often, mm-hmm. you know, and that happens every once in a while. You'll run into that in comic fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's pretty rare. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not a big part of what's cool about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway. so around this time after you, you know, have dealt with that, you're about level 10. So you can start, uh, moving up to the big leagues, baby. Uh, going back to the shine, the shining stars who have a new base. 
uh, yep. you know, Proton has been able to uh, been able to outfit it with all of his science stuff, but the skulls are broken into it, and you clear them yep. out. And Proton says, "All right, we need to figure out why the skulls attacked us." Yep, this is what we did together. Yeah, uh, this uh, thing. Uh, Manticore gave them the base. Yeah. So you taste these leads. We find out that the skulls have taken some of Proton's equipment and sold it to the Clockwork, another gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to go recover it. Um, you don't find everything, but you do get the field stabilizers that Proton needs to protect Galaxy City from further harm by meteors. Mm-hmm. Uh, they really gave this job to a real jobber. Uh, <laughs> Miss Liberty's too busy leveling people up. She can't <laughs> save the city from meteors. <laughs> yeah, Miss Liberty's swamped, literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have to do some VR testing uh, fights with various gangs in Manticore's mansion. Um, one of them is the council. Used to be Nazis. Used to be Nazis mm. called the Fifth Column, uh, the council did. But they changed that because, you know, maybe People not. People want to side with them because it's 2024. <laughs> because it's the fucking internet. Yeah, yeah it's awful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and while we're doing this, we're attacked by Praetor- Praetorian versions of the clockwork. Uh, the clockwork in our world are like almost literally like rinky dink little tinker toy kind of guys. They're clank clank your dead robots. The Praetorian ones are like super sophisticated kill bots, right? Yep. And, and, you know, this alternate reality where there are like super sentinels, you know, mm-hmm. obviously comic book is shit. Yeah. Um, you go to the ruins of galaxy city and activate the field stabilizers. Uh, were attacked by Praetorian villains. Uh, Dr. Graves, Zephyr, Crosscut, Dollface, and the Omnicore. <laughs> uh, I love the Omnicore as an answer to the Manticore. <laughs> um, it's every core possible. Um, yeah. And there's some dun-dun-dun uh, uh, intrigue going on. It seems like Twinshot uh, knows one of the other Praetorian villains here, Maelstrom, right? Yes. Uh, yep. So M- Manticore pulls you aside and says, hey, someone from your organization uh, called the Praetorians to, to, to attack us like this, this attack, these meteors, they were summoned. Um, you know, this wasn't, you know, the threat that we thought it was. We thought it was the Shivans, these, uh, I don't know, a- ancient alien kind of guys. Uh, but like yeah. these meteors came from Praetoria. Uh, they were trying to, you know, disguise it says he's going to investigate, but you should keep your eyes open. Yeah. False flag operation. Yeah. Um, I did not do any of this stuff with the, the Vazlock. Yeah. Uh, here, tell me a Vazlock. Um, yeah, so these are the, these are the zombie guys. Um, you find out that, uh, they were, they are attacking water department employees. Uh, so you beat your way up the ladder, uh, and Mm -hmm. see that there are missing chemical shipments. Um, and you combine these two facts and learn Vazalok is working on an experimental drug to stop tissue rejection and wants to prime the population. Uh, with this so he can harvest oh. and fuse people better uh, he's going to poison Paragon's water supply with this so you have to okay. go to this water purification plant and take out one of his lieutenants uh, Vazlok is almost entirely about poisoning people against their will yeah makes a lot of sense for a water supply mission mm-hmm. to happen in a superhero game yeah um, yeah uh, so you take that out mm-hmm. you do that you destroy the canisters uh, yeah. sounds like um, there are different contacts you can have there are ones that are detectives Mm-hmm. Uh, here, if you do enough missions for them, you'll get the police scanner. So you can get, uh, I love this. You can get radiant missions. Yep. Uh, <laughs> there's like, I, I cannot understand the, the content thirst that one must have. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, every fifth one of these, it's, it's a little cool. You get a safeguard mission, um, uh, where you go to a cordoned off instance, like a part of the city. And there's one big incident that you need to stop. In my case, this was stopping a bank robbery, but, uh, the chaos is causing a whole bunch of people to, uh, uh, just start like attacking stuff around the around the city. So you have to uh, stop their stop their property destruction. You know, to just break somebody's neck for uh, kick for kicking a newspaper stand dispenser thing. Mm. Um, yeah. And then they're like, also, you'll find out. Oh, there are bombs that have been placed around, and you can just keep this going for as long as you want. As long as you keep on stopping people and disarming bombs, this mission can go, and your rewards will mount as you do it's it. It's like mercenary mode. Yeah, you know, almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the one of the many things you can do for kind of power uh, power leveling. Yeah, yeah. You know, this game. Uh, there's more Vazlock stuff. Um, Vazlock made like a, a super disease 
wanted to mm-hmm. uh, put, put put out there. This is basically the exact same as the as the mm-hmm. pollutant, uh, but you get to meet uh, some of his uh, some of his higher peoples, uh, uh, you know, higher units, uh, the Idolins, which are like his uh, perfect beings. They have like elemental mm-hmm. attacks and stuff, uh, and you get to get the cure uh, for yourself and to distribute to others. Nice. Yeah. Um, back on on stuff I did. Uh, taking down Superdyne eventually got me to reference a hero named Eagle Eye, who was a regular uh, original member of the Regulators. Uh, these were a group of uh, heroes that fought drugs in the eighties. Uh, <laughs> cute, like the Mister T's Commandments kind of. Mr. Yeah. T's Commandos. Yeah. Um, Mister T's the, Commandments. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, oh, you know Mister T's Commandments. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Get, get eight hours of sleep every day. <laughs> Go to it's school. A, it, Respect your it, elders. Yeah, it's a, it, well, in rap songs. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're great. Uh, honor your father and mother. Um, the, uh, so the city council has been taking action against this drug. Uh, it's mm-hmm. usage, but the council members are getting assassinated whenever they go to speak about it. Uh, so you go and you try to fail or you try and fail to save several of them. It's so funny. Eventually, <laughs> so many, you, the, the council's the just getting murked over I and over. I love that they keep getting murked and that the way that when you get there after it's done, it's hallways with guys standing around. Uh-huh. <laughs> Like, it, why are you guys still here? You <laughs> killed the thing. Uh, eventually, you run into the family, which is the mob yeah. uh, here, trying to perform the job. It turns out that they used to be involved in the Superdyne ring until the Skulls tried to cut them out of it. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying to use their connections to get the council to deal with their rivals for them. Yes. So um, you have to climb the ranks in the Skulls. You have to get close to their other leader, um, mm-hmm. uh, the other brother, Velez. Uh, and to do this, you have to disguise yourself. So this is a special mission where you're in an instance. Your appearance changes to be one of the Skull shotgunner lieutenant guys. Um, and your movement set changes as well. Um, yeah. you're, you know, you, all you can do is punch and then, and then, and then shoot gives you a chance to try out some different powers. Uh, you have to earn the trust of the gang by completing a trial by combat in the rib cage to become uh, a bone daddy. Yes. Like you're ready to become a bone daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but as is happening, the police raid the club. So you have to escape. This is a thing where the pathfinding uh, mm-hmm. gets pretty frustrating. The way out of here is not intuitive. Yeah. I found. Uh, and you just have an arrow, you know, you have a compass mm-hmm. thing pointing you towards it. It doesn't take into account elevations and like the absolutely nonsensical back rooms esque layout <laughs> of every building in this. Yeah. This the, com- the compass isn't especially useful because different floors in a place, um, yes. like there's no verticality to the way these, the, the way that these are laid out. So you'll go up an elevator, but like that is a separate room that is technically like to the West of where you were. Or something yeah. like that. So it's easy to get it's, confused around that. Yeah. It's part, it's part of just the locations not making sense. Yeah. Uh, so. you, you learn about a rave that the skulls are holding uh, and you get yes. there. Um, and the, the, uh, to, you've got to rescue the partiers because Vela's sister, Marana, uh, is holding them hostage. Right. And you yep. plan a tracking device on her during this as you're saving people and she'll lead you, uh, to the, the factory where they're mixing up yeah. the Severodyne. The, uh, the rave here has my favorite visual comedy beat. Um, after you complete it, uh, after you take care of the enemies, the ravers can now go home mm-hmm. and they all run towards the same door. Uh, but only a couple of them go through it once mm-hmm. and they're all programmed to go through the door, but they can't get to it. So they start jumping. Uh-huh. It looks like a bunch of fleas, like escaping drowning, <laughs> you know, that's not just like super villain. That was Dr. Crawlspace speaking. The, uh, <laughs> like, it just looks like it's, it's very comical. It looks like just, you know two dozen people all running and jumping at the same wall uh, in, you know, turbo jank all with the little floats above their head. They go, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Call Space. Thank you. It's very cute. Like, set to the set to the techno beat. <laughs> yes. It's, it's very funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the mission that we, this is one of the missions we did together uh, yeah. was the final raid on the factory where they're mixing up the Superadyne. Uh You go yep. there to fight Velez and all of his higher level lieutenants. And when you defeat him, he sets the facility on fire. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so you have to grab the facility manager to get them out. He says, you know, TikTok, you know, Spider-Man, are you going to save the civilian or kill me? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you go to save the facility manager. Um, you, once you have him triggered, he just follows you and you just run out. Yes. Um, and this ends with a story about, this is the last storyline I did, this Lords of Death one. Mm-hmm. Uh, ends with the storyline of what happened to the original regulators, uh, one of them, Back Alley Brawler. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was following the Superdyne case, was ambushed by a Skull's hired gun. And this is kind of neat. You play a flashback mm-hmm. um, of this mercenary named Deadlock. Uh, you yeah. get his powers. You sneak up behind him and take your own uh, super serum to beat him up. Yeah. At this point. Uh, he's not dead. He's just re- yep. recovering. Goes to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is the last thing I did. 
for this. Mm-hmm. I didn't do any other missions. I mean, I did some miscellaneous yeah, first yeah. missions, gather up 10 clockwork guys on the street, mm-hmm. et cetera. The thing about MMOs is stuff takes a very long time. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of play yeah. uh, to get there. So, um, I did, I have, I have three more, uh, st- like storylines noted down. I will try and be brief about them. Um, mm-hmm. uh, technically impossible clockwork have been popping up. Uh, this is an art called the mind of a King. Like, oh, they shouldn't be working this way. And you go out and you defeat a whole bunch of them and bring them to a lab for study and they can't reactivate them. But then suddenly they activate on their own, uh, further, further missions reveal, like you put them back down and they get back up. Um, the, 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 that these clockwork they're not mechanical at all they're being psychically controlled by the clockwork king himself so these are like yeah. little contra- constructs yeah the uh, super clockwork king sounds super cool mm-hmm. uh, the picture of them is inc- incredibly dorky uh, i don't know if you've looked at the clockwork king <laughs> yeah uh, uh this is like a psychonauts enemy to yeah me. Uh, <laughs> uh, his 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 big uh, super uh, the, the giant monster for the clockwork the babbage is kind of cool looks like a big iron giant mm-hmm. thing um there's a quest line called uh, Lost and Found that kind of introduces you to like the uh, like the the occult interest club uh called the Midnighters uh that opens up like some I believe like cross cross alignment co-op uh with some villains. Uh hmm. you are working for this guy at the university named Montague Castanella. Um you have to rescue one of his students uh but you you know but his research has revealed uh, a Rikti, one of these aliens that, uh, um, you know, normally is hostile, uh, wants to defect, you know, wants asylum, you know, wants to help mm-hmm. us out because he knows that um, the the disease that affects this gang called the Lost, these are the most explicitly homeless coded uh, people. Mm-hmm. They're like walking around with garbage uh, all over them as armor and stuff. Cool. Uh, the disease that affects them is of Rikti origin and he wants to help cure it. So you have to mm. go around and gather all of these um, uh, like relics of things uh, to make this magical cure, uh, to make a magic wand that you can use to cu- to cure the to, to to cure the lost. And you go around and you have to cure twenty of them to prove that it works. Uh, this is my favorite comedy beat. Like the character okay. models for the lost are all you know these big scary guys or whatever. When you when you use the uh, when you use the wand, what it does is it just changes them into a random citizen. So you're using this wand and turning them into an entirely different person. That's great. That's straight up the uh, the uh, Simpsons bit where the unhoused person turns into a mailbox for a Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maple Systems yeah. Road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and this gets you access to the Midnighter Club and its time travel stuff. Uh, eventually, like this culminates in being able to go back to ancient Rome much, hmm. much later uh, for a time travel one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's another story beat with the uh, with the Shining Stars, uh, which is entirely about uh, fighting more of this Praetorian clockwork, trying to, f- you know, figure out who uh, opened up the rift. You know, like to get these people over, those uh, pieces of technology should be extremely restricted. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, you, you use Manticore's computer to track these transactions, and you find out that it's likely, uh, you know, two people in the Shining Stars Flambeau because of her personality disorders, or Twinshot because she's known associates with that Maelstrom Praetorian. Um, mm-hmm. And this ends, you know, with you working with Grimm is like, okay, well, we got to confront her because we can't be letting her do this. You know, she's this sucks because she's so friendly. You go back to the Shining Stars base um, to find her in the process of fighting more more of these Praetorian clockwork. Um, she's figured out who really did it. It's Proton, um, mm. the, the, the you know the leader who has been building an interdimensional portal, trying to you know, saying that he is trying to avert the destruction of Paragon City. Uh, you yes. know what he has been shown through this. You know is you know the the the, the awful future that he came from, and he has been led to believe that Praetorian Earth is the is that future um, that he's trying to avert, and so the Praetorian uh, uh, supervillains like they they show up through the portal, and then it turns into a big like five on five fight against all of these mm-hmm. people um, in order to neutralize them, uh, and then you know get get proton the help that he needs because he is a computer cyborg man whose ram was messed with or whatever yeah he's been hacked yes yeah yeah uh and then the the team goes on hiatus yes while he gets therapy 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the kind of story stuff that between the two of us we did. But mm-hmm. uh, because we try to give a, as complete a picture as we can of things. Mm-hmm. And we have somebody in our community, uh, Jerry Kahn, uh, who is a veteran player. Yes. Of this. Um, they provided a really good before I play mm-hmm. notes thing uh, to, to me that I use to kind of pick a class. Mm-hmm. And we reached out to them uh, to ask for any kind of information about what's cool about late game. Mm-hmm. Play? Like, what do we not get to? Yes. So this is us summarizing their notes uh, that we commissioned. Uh, Want to give a big thanks. Yes. Uh, to, to Jerry Khan for that. Like, mm-hmm. huge help. Yes. Uh, didn't he do this? We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I love that we can round out this picture, right? Yeah, so they, same. They talk about the, the scope of the game expanding. You know, to get uh, these larger threats and arcs, trials, and raids, like the the Richty try and invade again. Uh, like, there's a whole there's a whole zone of the city that is uh, that is the Richty war zone. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so you can reprise that. Uh, there's a thing called the Shattered Shard, uh, exploring this uh, world, which was ruled by the four aspects of a mad god, uh, Rularu. <laughs> Rularu. Rularu. Uh, dealing yeah. with Praetoria, which you mentioned a little bit, this mirror universe where the mm-hmm. canon heroes are evil, uh, the, the fascist Justice League thing. Yeah. Um, and this is also where later you time travel to ancient Rome. Mm-hmm. to stop it from being conquered by a modern day fascist. Uh, uh-huh. love that. Like a bunch of Twitter guys <laughs> with Rome in their avatar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my, yeah. My marble statue return people. Yeah. 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 Very funny. Um, and then there are like, uh, there, there are like high level arcs where you're dealing with, uh, signature characters from city of villains. They say, um, you know, uh, who are setting up their own tough stuff, uh, you know, yeah. syn- synergizing all these different technically separate releases in a cool way with a shared world. Yep. Uh, they mentioned that Praetorian Earth is the closest City of Heroes gets to a traditional MMO endgame. Uh, it has these incarnate trials, and there's an alternate advancement system for characters at the level cap. Yeah. Um, where you can gain access to incarnate powers. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just going to read a quote from this directly. These powers were extremely overpowered and had many options uh, for which ones you wanted and included significant stat buffs, massive ally buffs, powerful summonable pets, and judgment powers, capital J, uh, that could take out entire groups of enemies at once. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but this was never finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game was canceled before this could be completely finished. Yeah. Um, this was in addition to the game's original endgame raid, uh, the Hamadon. Um, Which gigantic, is a, that's a myrmidon made of ham gary that does sound like a myrmidon made of ham uh hamidon i i'm trying to give it some grace. hamidon hamidon there's only so many ways to do this yeah uh, it doesn't it doesn't have enough ver- hamidon Hem- 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 is a poor sign poseidon uh exactly ham is kind of a killing <laughs> consonant <laughs> the, the, uh, ham kind of kind of takes the the wings out of stuff yeah. uh, this is actually unlike being a ham though this was a gigantic amoeba that mm-hmm. had world absorbing ambitions think starro uh, and dc comics large range of uh players would actually go inside it and beat up its mitochondria that's pretty mm-hmm. sick yeah uh but players never figure out how to beat it fairly as originally designed so it ended up getting changed it got uh, nerfed it is so funny how often this had to happen. The same thing yeah. happened in WoW, uh, I believe, with one of its original late game raids. And then in EverQuest, mm. uh, there was Carafirm, the sleeper, uh, which mm. l- regenerated so fast uh, that uh, you, you couldn't possibly beat it. Uh, and it had mm. to be reworked. Uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Jerry mentions a little bit about the invention system. Um, after level 25, uh, this thing that allows you to craft special enhancements, uh, got, you know, came into its own, um, where you can craft set enhancements. Um, this became a big progress marker, as we mentioned, uh, the more of the, the same set you had slot into power, the more global stat bonuses, all your powers got. Mm-hmm. So there was kind of a synergy piece there with enough of work. This allowed you to boost your defense to the soft cap. Uh, double your health regen, gain enough additional recharge. So many of your powerful defensive abilities became permanent, uh, recharging before they could wear off. Yeah. So this, uh, add new options and nuance, uh, to really min max your character at that higher level. Yeah. Um, I could see it like working out sets and trying to find the recipes for those, like knowing what you have to do could, could see it being a fun scavenger hunt. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, they also talk about how the game was made to be flexible. So you could be rewarded with, you know, rewarded regardless of where your level was at and what you were doing and something very neat. Uh, I was introduced to this, to this as time travel. I think it was Jerry who, uh, gave this to me. Uh, there is a special realm called Ouroboros, uh, 
uh, which is like this nexus of time. Uh, you can use it to travel to a bunch of different places uh, just by clicking a power and summoning a portal. Uh, but this is also how you can go and uh, do content that you outleveled. Like you can level yes. back down. Um, you can level back down to see stuff. If you're locked out of a quest, you can go and do it. I think this even includes like quests that were made obsolete uh, by the progression of the of the game over the course of issues. Uh, it's real cool. Uh, taking away some of the FOMO element of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jerry says one of City of Heroes' major innovations uh, was that it was designed so that people could do content whatever at whatever level they chose with whoever they liked. And so to me, the end game was the entire game. Yeah, I wonder if that if that that it kind of implies that the Ouroboros does that. I didn't look into this. I I need to look into it. Yeah. Whether you could actually without power leveling. I know you can do that late equipment if you do a sidekick mm-hmm. thing, if you if you go with somebody yeah. to do it. But I wonder if there is a way to get to, to be the principal person. Like if somebody has to get to that. Yeah, I think somebody you know? has to do it. Yeah. yeah. Or whether it's something you can skip to using time travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Ouroboros stuff is for going backward. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, Jerry uh, also says, uh, and this is a mistake I made, um, mm-hmm. it would be a mistake to ignore Mission Architect, which is an incredibly flexible story arc editor that made missions other people could play. Uh, the architects could create their own custom enemies in the usual character editor, customize their powers, and create their own enemy groups out of them. They could write every piece of text in the arc and tell their own stories, or they could make another uh, fire farm. The system was brutally exploited. <laughs> um, I don't know what a fire farm is. Uh, it's just a place to grind. Uh, a good level, you know, okay. yeah, just yeah. a bunch of bunch of shit in a room that's not necessarily uh, aggressive. That's easy, that's worth a lot of XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the only limitation uh, was that they had to pick from pre-designed map layouts and enemy spawn points. Uh, love the architect. Wrote several story arcs myself. It's extremely fun to work with. Uh, the way you get to this is through the entertainment industry. Yes. Um, which I didn't do until near the end of my time, mm-hmm. uh, because I just, I saw it on the map. I was like, what's this thing yeah. and learned about this, but it was, I was already at my playtime yeah. basically. And, and was not, not super curious. And then also I move in house. Yeah. Uh, so I feel a little bit bad for not, for not checking this out, but it does sound cool that there is a editor yeah. in this, you know, you I can mean, also play as kind of a dungeon master. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Earlier, early, earlier I talked about there only be, there only being so many, uh, levers you can pull with this kind of mechanic, you know, like, okay, mm-hmm. like we can make an, we can make an enemy or, you know, we, we can make a, 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 a unit in the game follow you. Right. Yes. And they can make them despawn when they get close to something. Like th- when you're working with that limited set of triggers, it's not necessarily that hard to expose those. Um, yes. and make it possible for somebody with limited scripting or whatever to, uh, to, to manufacture those. Right. So yeah, the, sim- the simplicity worked for this. Yeah. 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 Uh, they also talk about how the biggest part of the end game, uh, in city of heroes is making alts, right? Like the end game is just to, just to make it another character and, and, and go again. Uh, and when the city of villains and, and going rogue, uh, expansions came out, you had to make a character at level one to experience them. You know, at, mm-hmm. at the time that they came out so you just l- l- leveled up uh and they say both provided new leveling experiences and going uh and going rogue in particular offered a more complicated story set in praetoria uh it allowed the player to make meaningful moral choices and betrayals in a way that the game hadn't been able to before i could believe that later expansions would yeah. have better writing and story Agreed. Uh, and then they, they close up and they say, you know, that's not even getting into socializing. Uh, did you find t- pocket D or stumble upon a costume contest? Uh, there's technically snowboarding kind of, um, yeah. I did not, uh-huh. uh, not for lack of trying. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was, I ran around. Yeah. I did a lot of time running around, seeing what was around. I just didn't run into this stuff. I saw pocket D on a map cause it's listed as transit. Um, and I saw that it was a, a portal and I'll be honest, I got scared. I didn't know yeah. if I would go through and be unable to come back. <laughs> I think it's a, a PVP zone. Yeah. Uh, I believe. Uh, and not totally. I, I could be wrong about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that is, uh, you know, for, from a longtime fan perspective on kind of some of the later stuff we didn't get to, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And that's, uh, boy, uh, I was created from nothing by, uh, it's a no fire zone. I think oh. this, it's actually the hangout. It's the opposite of a P- PVP zone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's created a- by a DJ and I think you just hang out. Oh, uh, yeah. it's, it's, an, uh, it's an NVN, nobody versus nobody. It's a nobody versus nobody where you hang out and talk to people. Huh. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, it's a dance club. Hmm. So cool. I, cool. I had no idea. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about in this game, 
uh, and this is uh, not trying to go out on a sour note. It is one of the worst tutorialized games I've ever played in my life. <laughs> um, the uh, None of this stuff that we found out does the game tell you. Yeah. Uh, you know, every once in a while, there'll be like a barker. There's a civil servant being like, hey, let me tell you about day, day jobs. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of assumed knowledge going into this, which I understand. Like, it is unusual for somebody to make a serious try at this in 2024. Mm-hmm. You know, and not have go deep with it and not go for a very long time with it. Yeah. Um, but those some of those things, if it had been I needed to know that some of this cool stuff could could happen. Yes. Um, I needed a lot more carrot mm-hmm. for this. Like the fundamental problem why this this game is not for me are MMO things. It's the the design structure that you're always on a ladder that leads to another ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, one way or another. And the fact that I, for me, gaming is a solitary activity. Yep. You know, I, I do my group gaming at the table. Um, but the other thing is just that these cool things like fighting giant monsters, going on these more complicated raids, having these more complicated storylines are not things that the game attempts to surface even a little bit. Yeah. Um, when you pick it up, which is a bummer. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta, you gotta sell it a little bit. Yeah. You know, you can have a game that has a slow start, but you should at least have hints of that. So, you know, that you're going to get to something cool later. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel like, G- you know, give, give me, give me something to look forward to by like showing me stuff to look up to. Right. Like, yes. I don't know, give me a smaller role inside of one of the giant monster missions or whatever. It's like, okay, while this monster is, you know, going around and you see NPC, mo- you know, NPC heroes fighting this thing, like you've got to go and like clear out three of these buildings. Right. Yeah. Like and yeah. it's going on in the background. Yeah. You know, as a thing like, and the, you could, the interface would make that a little bit challenging to get across, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a little bit like the, the difference between text that is presented to you omnisciently versus said by a character mm-hmm. is very inconsistent in this. And they'll occlude each other. <laughs> um, you, you'll get uh, omniscient text that will cover up character text, things like that. Mm-hmm. That really, really cool to see like the, you know, the, uh, Sentinels or whatever, the, uh, phalanx mm-hmm. bantering back and forth over a big monster while he's doing something in the background. Yeah. The presentation wouldn't carry that, but I could put enough Vaseline over the lens to believe it. Yeah. You know, I think, I feel like I could round up for the fantasy doing that. I would still run into the combat being not very fun. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it just, it's, it's not for me. And it's, it's the reason it's not for me is because I feel like a big part of, the big part of the, if not the appeal, a big part of the base of this game and genres, MMOs of this era are a treadmill, yeah, are leveling. Like what you do is level mm-hmm. and the things you do to level are the same things. And if that is, you can do other things while you're doing that, mm-hmm. you know, um, like I can understand it being fun to like chat with friends while doing that, but that on its own is not enough to bring me to the yard. Yeah. It almost feels like a parallel thing to a video game. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a very specific type of video game experience that doesn't, you know, that reminds me of a idle game or something like that, that is, has different goals, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, or like a live service thing, a perpetual time pile, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not trying to sound you know, hyperbolic or like, damn it too much because like I did have some fun with it. Yeah. You know, there was, there was some fun to be had. Um, I love the character creator. I like to make him my guy, like mm-hmm. to run it around. I just can't imagine this just being my thing and mm-hmm. never moving on to other stuff. That's the thing about you know? MMOs. And that's what got me to put them down was the time commitment to even stay current on them. Um, I would have rather spent that time playing new stuff. Right. Yeah. This also, I mean, like it could have been, I, I went to college in 2006, which was kind of right in the middle of the, like the, one of the high watermarks for this kind of MMO, you know, you had, yeah. you had, you had wow out and you had everybody kind of chasing that. And there was just a bumper crop of, you know, MMOs of this, of this design ilk. And I just had a bunch of other stuff drawing me away from it. The time commitment is the, is, is, is the big deal. This is always, um, this is something that is always getting made, made easier. Uh, mm. le- leveling curves are, uh, flattened. Um, you know, uh, early game, uh, they, they make it so that you can, you know, rush through it, you know, getting from level one to 10 used to take, you know, 20 hours and they make it. So like, by the time you're out of the tutorial, you get, you know, you get out of there at like level, level five. Right. There's yeah. a, there's a bunch of stuff like that that is done to ease it up, but it is still a fundamental problem where it is, it is, it ends up being more time. It is still more time than a regular game to consume a lot of very similar content. <laughs> it, the similar content is the death knell. To yes. me. Like there are ways to power level 
Like I looked up that and people were like, yeah, power level. Uh, and then I was looking up, um, you know, there are also ways to buy like XP boosters and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, things like that to, to get out of playing certain parts of the game. Mm-hmm. What I playing was doing, the game should be its reward. <laughs> yes, th- th- that's exactly it. Like being able to start at max level and see that content, that neater content and play mm-hmm. with a build. Yeah. Spent, put you in more time in that first part of that equation where I'm theory crafting a build. Yeah. You know, and that is more fun than playing the game. Again, though, it just doesn't it doesn't have gas. Yeah. Like I just what I'm doing is not, you know, and even if I was making a team. I would, mm-hmm. Once I made that team, I would have made that team. Yeah. Contract part of it is just it being a cooldown based action game in real time mm-hmm. because they have to have other characters play at the same time. Like a lot of this stuff would be solved to me if this were turn based. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is designing it from the ground up differently, right? Yeah. Like this is saying like an apple would be better if it's a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. But my point being that like this build craft stuff and team composition sings in a lot of other genres for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of what it is, is that I'm constantly being faced with dynamic changes yeah. uh, through it and content that feels more authored. Uh, and I am allowed to be reactive. Yes. Um, you know, as opposed to being a machine, turning mm-hmm. myself into an algorithm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm keeping, uh, I'm keeping the different drinky birds going. Yeah. Yes. And it's one of my least favorite feelings in games. Mm-hmm. Uh, keeping the drinking birds going takes me out of a game. Yeah. You know, uh, it makes me not feel like it, it kills the fantasy. Mm-hmm. I'm more susceptible to the compulsion loop than you are on these. Like I, you know, I gladly put the time that I did into this. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that I was having, you, you, you know, I wasn't laughing and slapping the entire time, you know, laughing and yeah. clapping. Uh, but it's like, yeah, no, it just, I, I remember, I remember how this felt and it was cool to get the, you know, just one more level and see how this new power works, you know, with some of the others. Um, Dungeon train. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, 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 precisely. You know, it is, yeah. uh, it is, it is dungeon train purposes, right? And took me back to an earlier time for, you know, for myself, but nostalgia is not a, uh, uh, that, that is not a long burning fuel, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. so it was super neat to go back. I am, uh, immensely grateful, A, for the opportunity, you know, that just through, we wouldn't have done this on our own. So thank you very much, Steven, yeah. for executive producing this, uh, for me to go back to something I, you know, enjoyed very much when I was much younger. Um, uh, I, I forget where I was going. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, you mm-hmm. know, generally like I, to the degree, you know, what a weird thing this reminded me of in mm-hmm. terms of having a set of tasks in front of me that were largely the same mm-hmm. is dragon age two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's though, real. Know, I mean, it's not as MMO as uh, as a uh, fucking in- inquisition, but yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's also cooldown based combat in a set number of semi arenas. Mm hmm. They're largely the same. I think the difference reason why I like that more is that it had an ending Mm -hmm. and because I was composing an entire team. Yes. You know, like you add a a degree of complexity to this and I'm not immune to the appeals of having a series of tasks that are simple and I know what to do to make a number go up. Like you just have to complicate it a little bit more for, for Gary's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the, the base carb of that is not something that I think should be eliminated from food. Right. Yeah. Oh. And different strokes for different folks. Like I played this and it didn't feel appreciably different from like a Diablo loot cycle to me. Right. Yeah. That's just, yep. you know, moment to moment. Is that, is that satisfying to you? I, yes. you know, like to be in the character, you know, down in the world and, you know, managing the, managing the cooldowns more than I like Tappa Tappa. Right. But it's, yeah. you know, yeah. it's all going to spend differently for different people. So yeah. And buckle up. You're yep. going to tap a bunch next week. We are. Um, we're tapping baby. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, that is for next episode, though. This episode, um, first of all, thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Thank you, Stephen. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this and you are a marginalized creator of any stripe and you would like to have us shout out your project or product, please send me an email, gary at duckfeed.tv. Include a link, a description, pronouns, anything you'd think that would be useful mm-hmm. uh, for us. Um, we'd be happy to do so. Nothing in the line right now, so it's a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to be able to do that if we can. Yeah. So, um, if you have thoughts on this month's games, I think you have a little bit of time left um, before uh, the deadline. The deadline is always the fifteenth of every month. Uh, so, if you're catching this in the nick of time and you have things to say about Super Bomberman Two, City of Heroes, or um, Fable Two, go to DuckFeed.tv/contact and um, write in. We prefer responses that are uh, specific uh, and concise. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And the deadline for October's games is going to be October the 15th for our Halloween spooky games. Yeah, which are Stasis Bone Totem, The Last Door Season 1, with a Last Door Season 2 chaser coming next year, um, a special on horror games at the arcade, and then our premium episode, which is on Crow Country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, started Stasis Bone Totem last night. It has a nice atmosphere. Uh, it looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, I, the uh, it doesn't teach you how to play it. Oh. A little warning for people. I think that there's something cool there. Mm -hmm. um, the interface is difficult, uh, or is difficult for me mm -hmm. to figure out what does what in the uh, the first person sections. Mm -hmm. um, I had to look that up. Yeah, but now that I have it, it's fine. Yeah, so not not a death knell of any kind. Um, if you want to sponsor an episode. Um, like Steven did go to patreon.com slash duck feed TV. Uh, you can do that there. You can also get, uh, for a much lesser amount of money, get a bunch of bonus episodes mm -hmm. of different shows, uh, this show and others, excuse me. Yeah. Um, you don't just get fable Two, uh, and crow country. You get all of the, uh, premium episodes we have done, uh, back mm -hmm. to when we started doing premium episodes. We think it's good value and it's only, the value is only getting better each time. Um, and if you can't do that, we understand, uh, leave a rating or review in your podcast directory of choice, wherever you get this, maybe you can leave a review. It does help us. Yeah. We'd appreciate it. You can also tell your friends, write about us online, uh, and join us in thinking our producer, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what, until next time, what should they watch out for? Uh, until next time, watch out radioactive man.